The circle is spinning. Hey, everybody, we're live. Another edition of Hangout Conversations with Matt Rappaport. That's me. I'm having a beer. I have a couple of friends with me. They all flash people for a living, uh, and they get paid for it. There, look, Lotus Carroll, Michael Bonacore, Scott Detweiler, and me. And then Mark Rodriguez will pop in when he feels like it, or and maybe Tim Clare. I invited him. He's an artist. He likes to be my sidekick. He's going to watch for a bit and troll us. Uh, all right, so what this, what's going on today? So we had a great hangout last week with Stacey Frazier. She cooked some tacos with her fiancé, who she met on Google+. Plus. And this week we have photographers. I've met Michael, I've met Lotus, and Scott I've had a hangout with. I've not had the pleasure of meeting him. And so I think the first question I really – I did have a question of mine. So you guys all have your cameras. Everybody's taking pictures on their smartphones, their iPhones, their Androids, whatever. What, what do you guys – how do you guys feel about the smartphone photography – the apps and all that, and you've been asked it a million times, or, or, or it's the first time anyone asks you what you think about smartphone photography and what goes along with it, because it must be the first time. And you guys can cut each other off and, and, and jump at each other and fight each other, and if you do, I'll get more ratings. So. What has become the cliche, the best camera is the one that you have with you? I totally agree. So I think all of the photography you can do, whether it's with you know, a phone or a point-and-shoot or... You've got a DSLR, you're a crazy medium format person or a film person. So, I mean, I'm not, I don't think there should be limits, really. But do you have a specific, do you think, like, okay, this would be perfect for my phone and not for my, my big-ass camera, or is it just... Yeah, it's if I, don't have my, if I don't have my big-ass camera with me, I, I think it would be perfect for my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, so it's just like whatever's around. Yeah. Well, also, I try to keep, uh, I try to keep, you know, social media pretty updated, usually one... Yeah. One post minimum, two a, two a day, uh, usually. But I can't always, you know, edit as well our photos. I can't always get to a computer. I'm in my work a lot, um, and I don't have my catalog here. So I'll take an iPhone picture of, of a dog or a cute puppy here at the office. Or last night I was shooting the San Jose Earthquakes game. So what do I do? I post an iPhone picture just to show people I'm out, you know, doing some fun. And you're alive. Then I'm alive, but you know, there's there's no way. Even though I have all my camera equipment with me, I couldn't you know go ahead and obviously post one of those photos. So do you I guys, as far as as far as those those phone photos go, are you quick with the editing? Do you use filters? Are you very Snapseed like? And do you do you use, like really just mess with the exposure a lot, or do you just it's quick? Do you guys, Scott? What about you? Are you jumping in on the the phone photography too? Yeah, I, I I I hate my iPhone. I've got a Droid in in. Uh, I to hit my, my mobile phone when I have Droid, and, and I just don't like the, the noise or the pictures and whatever, but it's the camera you have with you, so if you see something <laughs> awesome, you take a picture of it, and then I hate it later. I upload it, and I say, cut yourself a picture, and I upload it, and then I sit there, and I stare at the noise, and sometimes I'll try and snap seed it to bring it back into reality, but it's like someone <clears throat> shopping a crappy picture to make it not crappy. It just doesn't ever work, so I have to You're a snap. regret... A uh, phone photographer, you post it and then you're like, oh, screw this, and you delete it later. <laughs> yeah, I do. do you delete I, it later I, after it has like a million likes? Well, like, I, I, I delete them all the time. I'm like, I don't want that up there because that's that's kind of like my my living portfolio. And I'm like, oh, you're so much smarter than I am. What presents you? So Lotus, Lotus, you you do you ever do you ever there are a lot of pictures of you sell or that you put up for yourself that aren't exactly clothed. Uh, do you ever think like <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever feel like removing them, or you're like I can't remove them. I'm gonna ruin some guy, girl's, fan, other's fantasy. Oh, you're such a My, dork. Um, no, you. if I posted it, I didn't feel ashamed of it in the first place. So why would I go back and take it down? Oh, not because you feel ashamed of your body, because you feel like Scott's saying you're like I don't like what I oh, did with the filter. Photo? Or, no, or um, you just didn't like what was, no, maybe it doesn't just, represent Lotus Carroll, the photographer. No, I think mostly I just own it. Either that, or I'm just. Too Wait, can you show me what it looks like? I just it? move on. And the other thing is that I really feel like it, with social media, your any any post you make, it has like a life, a shelf life of you know a couple of hours at best, and then it's gone. Nobody goes back and looks at that crap. Except I mean, when you get a micro post, we, right? We think we think so much of this like stuff that we work so hard on, and we're like, yes, it's there, and everybody is gonna see it later, and really nobody. I mean, it's rare that somebody really digs into your work and goes back and looks at all the older stuff. And so, speaking of pictures, if you if you hate it, you can also feel comfortable knowing that within a few hours, probably not. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it's wrong. I feel, feel like, that. but I feel like uh, with you guys, especially Lotus, you're pretty popular on Google Plus, and you guys all have somewhat of a following. 
feel like it, those pictures do pop up. Like, I'm sure you get notifications about old stuff all the time, like, nonstop, I don't know. Like, yeah, I guess. Not. I mean, sometimes, but again, like I said, I think I just... If I chose to post it in the first place, I don't think I... I, don't, I just own it. But I actually, when Scott said what he said, I think it's a really smart idea, too, to think of that as your living portfolio. So it's your body of work that represents you. And you don't know whether, you know, at some point there's an opportunity you might have and someone might be thinking of offering you a job or something and they go look through what's available by you online and they might see something that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want them to see when thinking of whether or not they want and to And literally for you, it is your body of work. <laughs> you took my line, Matt. I did. Well, yeah, you're, I did. Me, me, and Michael, me and Michael are like brothers from another mother. I, mean. I do take photos of other, other stuff, things. yes. Can you <laughs> name, name five things. No, <laughs> her son? Five her things other son. than my son. No, your son. You do take flowers. a lot of pictures of your son, flowers. So, Landscape, yeah. uh, abandoned Landscape. stuff, architecture, macro but, photography. I do a little bit of everything. So what, do you, have, do you guys each have your favorite subject to take pictures of or no? Or is that too hard to... Because to, Michael's uh, holding his ball, and I'm thinking ball. Michael's always holding his balls. No, just one ball, not the other ones. Hey. So I, I didn't my, say it. It's my ode to Lance Armstrong. <laughs> Look, we can be nuts. Um, <laughs> Lance Armstrong, is he on Google Plus? I should invite him. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it's... Uh, my, my favorite form of photography, and what I really love shooting, is anything travel documentary uh, style. So I travel the world a lot with uh, Colby Brown's company, The Giving Lens. Uh, we do photography workshops all around the world. I'm taking off for India and Thailand uh, in about two weeks, actually. And just walking the streets of, of another country completely opposite of, of what you're used to in your everyday life and just snapping street portraits and... and Pretend. Hey, look at that. Well, I'm going to go grab a beer. Oh, we're on air. <laughs> oh, damn. I totally, you, know, you can grab a beer. I totally surprised you guys. You guys didn't know I was going to do that. Actually, what it was is I went to go grab the link, and I hit the wrong one. But uh, you, were, you were in India in my ear, and now you're getting a beer. Uh, but you can't surprise all the people all the time. Some, there's the link to the original post. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's pretty crazy to me that, you know, you could be, that Michael travels to all these different countries, India and, and whatnot. I know, like, people like Thomas and, and Colby Brown, I guess, Trey and whoever else, they, they're always in a different uh, country, a different landscape. It must be nice to be able to just literally be in any different place at any different time. Do you guys think that's definitely, I mean, it's an obvious advantage to be able to be anywhere at any place uh, to shoot new photography all the time? As yes. opposed to a photographer, yeah, that's like mm -hmm. not trapped in their city, but you know, I live in New York, so in New York, even New York, though, I mean, after a while, you're like, all right, I took a picture of the landscape, the Brooklyn Bridge, the Statue of Liberty, you know, different things. I mean, do you ever feel trapped in your area, or can you always find something brand new to shoot? Um, both, both, a little of both, right? Yeah. You never say the hardest place to, to take a picture is in your own backyard because you're used to seeing it every day, so you get used to it, and you it's boring, you know? I live in Milwaukee, you know? I don't, really okay. yeah. I don't have any, yes, the, the good land. We don't have any, like, awesome bridges or mountain ranges. Or, we got a, you got bridges. We got a couple cool buildings. Well, we got one bridge. One bridge? Yeah. One bridge, maybe two. We've got... Bridge uh, downtown is where you took some pictures. Yeah, we have a statue of the Fonz. Um, <laughs> you have beer. What else do you Beer? Need? What about beer. the beer factory? We have, a lot of, we have a lot of beer. And I take pictures of beer. But after a while, you... Anything like you can take pictures of beer anywhere. What about the, is there like a Laverne and Shirley museum or something? Uh, yeah, there's a well, I don't know if there's a Laverne and Shirley museum, but there's something a statue of the Fonz, as I said. That's good in enough. My head there is. I don't okay. need any more of that. <laughs> but if you take a picture of a beer, you could be in Thailand, you could be in Singapore, you could be in Iceland, doesn't matter. It's a picture of a beer on a table. Okay, so maybe I take it aside and hold it up and go, look, I'm in Milwaukee with a beer. Right. Shock. Although some countries have their own beer that don't doesn't don't leave the country, right? Michael, you've been to. Not sure. Michael, how many countries have you been to? Can you do you have a, a number count for us? Or? Uh, 
like 18, 18. something like that. Maybe 20. I don't, I don't even know. I'd have to. I'd have to get my passport. But my passport is in the hands of the Indian consulate right now, which is kind of <laughs> freaky. Is, this, is that? Did you just kind of something? He should. It's, yeah, it's kind of freaking me out actually. I had to send it off for the visa, which I've never heard of before. But have you ever uh, been to India? No. So I'm very, very excited for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't have my passport, so I can tell you. And hopefully, I'll get it back. Well, you can't go <laughs> if you don't get it back. But yeah, hopefully you do. Do you ever feel like not safe going to some of these countries? No, or? no. Actually, it's quite the contrary. I actually feel more safe um, in a lot of these countries than I do when I'm walking through South of Market here in San Francisco. I was going to say the NSA does not watch my show. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, there's some places in San Francisco or any major city city that you go to where you're just like, oh, man, what am I doing in here? But I've never had that feeling in, in any of the countries I've ever traveled to now. Why what do you that? think that is? You know, I, I don't know. I just um, I couldn't tell you. I just for Where did you, reason, did you grow up there? In San Francisco, yeah, uh, we have a very our city is very safe, but if you have a car, it's going to get broken into every other night. You know, if you're walking down the street, you're going to get harassed by a couple uh, couple of homeless guys who want some change, but they're very nice about it. You never feel like you're in danger, but you know it's. Uh, we it's, don't even have that in New York. Like I don't. I know. Have homeless guys, yeah, we don't have that in Milwaukee have, either. We have. We don't really have every other night someone breaks into your car, or you just oh, yeah. exaggerate. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Wow. Didn't wow. somebody just smash smash into yours? Yeah, like a week and a half ago. Awesome. So does that mean you need to park in a garage, or even if it was like? In a garage, I was parked in a garage. And it wow. <laughs> There's no no escape. Yeah. No surrender. Oh wow. well, so now I'm appreciating Milwaukee on a whole new level now. <clears throat> yeah, if you can get over that whole you know Dahmer thing, but. <laughs> that house, that house no fun, snow snow photography right. though, right? You got mounds and mounds of snow. Yeah, we have a lot of snow. A lot of Harleys, a lot of snow, a lot of beer. Do we get sick of shooting the snow or No. No, I, I mean, well, again, what I, I shoot tractors. There's a lot of tractors and a lot of barns. So I like make a little project of seeing that like if I'm out in Amish country or something like that, I'll take my camera and I'll shoot a barn and a cornfield and then a on the cornfield, and then maybe there's a Harley in the cornfield with some beer. It's kind of the same <laughs> thing. That works, and there's a farm girl, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah. So that's that's what I shoot is mostly women, and they come to the studio. So I have a very small universe of places where I shoot, 4,000 square feet or so, and then that's it. So you prefer then to shoot inside because that's what you do, or do you or you like to be outside, or you don't really care? No, I, I like I like to shoot in the studio mostly. Well, as I say, I, I would love to shoot on site, but I, I don't have an assistant very often because I have a lot of gear. And so if if I'm an artificial light guy and I use some natural light, but I always augment it. So like we went to a haunted house up in Green Bay. It's year it's there all year long. It's great. So they take the whole year decorating the place on the inside, and they do some amazing detail. And then uh, you go and you shoot it. Well, you have to take your own light because that thing is dark and creepy. And you can't. <laughs> you you, you got to take it and you light it and you do something amazing with it. But that involves an extra person and a whole lot of trips back and forth to the car. So. Wait, see, that's what the Hangouts are great. They have all these different things. Wait, can you say that it was dark and creepy again? It was dark and creepy. That's all I got. That's that's it. Yeah, I mean, Google, thank you for that. It's not Good that. job. Good job. Yay! That was, that, was brought to you by, that was brought to you by Brian Matias. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian Matias, yes. Brian Matias is like, you know what we need to do with photos on Google Plus? We need sound effects and Hangouts. That's what we need to do to improve. So Google, so you all been on Google Plus for ever in a day. Michael was a little behind. Well, he started at the beginning, but then he got you could get to catch up, right? Uh, so Michael, what made you? Uh, was every all your friends were like, Michael, why don't you ever post on Google Plus? Why are you on Google? Is that what happened, or did Brian Matias or whatever say, Well, I don't see any posts from you. You better post something. Or, <laughs> like, what was the deal? No, actually, I've been on Google Plus for quite a while, probably almost two years now. I would think I I pretty much got on right after launch, so maybe a month or two after launch, um, and I got on. I uh, went. Met Trey Radcliffe at one of his photo walks a couple years ago here in uh, San Francisco. That's incremental to success. 
in social it, media. It is, apparently. <laughs> yeah, Trey Ratcliffe yeah. seemed Trey Ratcliffe and Thomas Fox seemed to own. <laughs> well, I, like, I like how you included that as part of your story. <laughs> well, just let actually, you know, Trey Ratcliffe is part of why I take pictures. Is that what you're about yeah. to say? Well, actually, Google Plus and Trey Ratcliffe and Thomas Hawk are the reason why I have my job here at Smugmug. It's the reason nice. why I'm on Google Plus. Lotus is a big part of that because. Oh, uh, that's so cute! Um, you like shoved me in there at the end. Most people think that's what Lotus heard, used to hear in her single life, but she still hears that. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was it was uh, I I got invited in my early days on Google Plus to go to a photo walk, in which uh, I don't have Google the sound Pop. effects applause. I'm sorry, are you waiting for that? Which I know which <laughs> we're uh, going to be talking about today. Uh, I got an invite to go to a photo walk in Death Valley, put on by Thomas Hawk and Lois Carroll, and last were minute they, were there puppets? Because when you say put on, I'm thinking there was like a big show and no. <laughs> There should have been, but there was a uh, there was a lot of fun, and it was a weekend photo walk, and that's where I first met Thomas Hawk, first met Lotus Carroll, Karen Hutton, a uh, bunch of other people, uh, a couple of really good friends of mine, uh, Natalia. Uh, there were a bunch of Googlers. Natalia Stone. Bunch, uh, who yeah. cares about that? What? Ricardo Lagos, Vincent Mel, yeah. Dave Cohen. It was it was a lot of fun. So, uh, but from that, that's when I started really getting involved in Google Plus. And Did then, you ever have that photo op atmosphere before that, or no? No, that was my first one. You lost your photo op virginity on Google Plus. I did. That's, that's In Death Valley with Lotus Carroll. Boom! I lost my virginity photo op. <laughs> <laughs> was there pictures or didn't have Oh, there's pictures. <laughs> no, it was, it was a lot of fun. And then from that, I got you know involved more and more and more. And then uh, one thing led to another. And yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada, yada. Got a great job. Yeah, Cool. And what about you, Scott? So you, I met you on Google Plus way back when you were doing all that photography and uh, or prop those prop photography. But I can't. You're wearing that still. I can't even talk. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even look at you. Really, really can't. Why are we all putting on Google effects? You know, I, I, I was just like, I heard the applause thing, and I was like, well, I'm gonna go find some some stuff, and then I'm like, hey, check that yeah. out. Well, because I'm. Lotus is like, F you guys, uh, screw you guys. I don't oh, she's got like the... Uh, got real, I have real stuff lying around here. <laughs> real stuff. I have a jaunty cap. <laughs> My beard is not on right. Okay, there we go. It's always nice when you can just adjust your beard. Yeah, Movember's is. coming up. Are you gonna, is, there, is there Movember photography? Is that, is that a thing? I'm guessing every... If, they, if you can say it... Is there any word you can't put in front of photography? I don't think so. Is there any... I, w I want to try to do something fun for November. I, I, I have an yeah. idea. So. Yeah, I have an you mean like grow a beard and a mustache? That yeah, I'm going to grow a mustache. I have an idea. Well, my wife hates facial hair, so i got to do it and then do it quickly and get rid of it. So. She can't divorce you she because hates facial, facial hair. hair? Yeah, yeah. So I grow a goatee every so often. Like Mark has one right now. And, and I was like, oh, man, that's so cool. And she's like, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. Does she hate the way it looks or does she hate the way it feels? She hates the way it feels. Yeah, Nobody see, wants I, John has, a, has grown a, a beard and a mustache, and it looks great on him. I really like the way it looks. But every time he gives me a kiss, I'm like, oh, it's the facial stabbing. Yeah, she goes, she goes ouch. She says, ouch. <laughs> well, it's a little bit hurty. It's a little bit hurty. Say right, I'm sorry, I missed a question when I was trying to figure out my eye patch. Your eye patch is gone. You actually have a real hat on now. Is that, yeah, so I, it's I, not I a brew hat. I have many props. I have hats. A prop photographer with many props. Never heard yes, of have, uh, Oh, look, and you have a cat, too. Look at that. I do. Who I just scared the crap out of. Who you did scare the crap out of. Yeah. And you, Lotus, you've been... You, like, the first... I mean, the first, who could miss... You had the your original profile picture on Google+. You know, it's like when they put, that, put the, the list of people out there that, you know, I saw every day. I think I saw your picture with the, with the blue flower. With the blue? Yes. You know... With your, I don't, I don't do words with friends, so I can't. You don't do words with friends? What does that have to do with? I'm, you're confusing me now. I am. No, I just meant I didn't get the right wording, so I made a joke out of it. Oh, you don't have a good vocabulary, is what you were trying to. I say. have a vocabulary, I just don't have that word. <laughs> no, not today. Not with the puppy dog. No. So what were you making fun of me because I still have the same avatar that I had? Oh, I'm not making fun of you at all. I'm just that saying that's you're how doing? you're. That no, no one's making fun of you. If I was making fun of you, you'd know it. You'd feel it. No. It would hurt. <laughs> but it, I wasn't. <laughs> Michael's not making fun of you either because he's in love with you. 
No, yes. See the hearts? It's so it's sweet. Got, <laughs> it's got a lot of hearts. No, I said something inadvertently here. <laughs> you, we, oh, yeah, we all got the props going. Props to you for that. But what? So, so Google Plus, when you first, I mean, what was your photography social media experience like before Google Plus, and how did it change after the influx of Google Plus? Um, you know, I had just started really, really focusing on my photography right around that time. Um, in the past, I was more focused on mommy blogging, and I took photos. Um, they my skill and ability to understand photography is so much greater now than it was then. Um, and I had a Flickr account, and I shared stuff to it so that I could post it on my blog. <laughs> I would embed from Flickr. But right around like 2010, 2011 was when I started focusing on photography more. So it was kind of a good timing for me with all of that then when Google Plus started, and I started sharing it there. And I've I think I've really grown as a photographer in general just in that time period, but it was nice to have that platform to meet so many other photographers that I could be inspired by and learn from right during the time when I was really starting to focus on my own work a lot more. So that's been really nice. That's cool. Yeah, and I met, I got to meet you last summer at the High Line, and we got to do yeah, a was walk there. Yeah, it was really fun. It's a lot of fun, and you're in Texas. I'm in Texas. I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin, nice. Scott's to Milwaukee, and Michael is in San Francisco, and I'm in New York. We're representing the entire, we're representing the four corners Boom. Of, the, of the United States right here. And then everyone in Canada is like, where's the Canadian photographers? <laughs> hey? Yeah, you were lax on that. You didn't invite a Canadian photographer. I and I only invited one female. That was not a mistake. But I, I figured you were... We should have had Kate. Yeah, next time. Oh, Friday. she's she's both Canadian and female. Yeah. Damn it. Or Sarah. Sarah Coll Colleton, is that it? Yeah. So, I don't know who would actually come on my show. So. Sarah is our um, Drink and Click leader in Toronto. So, is Drink, so talk about Drink and Click. I know that's. I know there's one in New York. Is that something that started on Google Plus or before Google Plus and exploded? Um, we didn't really start on Google Plus. Juan, um, I met Juan Gonzalez through Google Plus, um, and that was Drink and Click is his baby, what he started. Um, which really, I think, started because he realized how much he liked to take photos and drink. And so he thought, why don't I just make this a thing so that I can really have an excuse for my wife that it's like, you know, it's actually a thing. It's a group, honey. We go do this. It's homework. I, I have to drink now, tonight. Well, it's really... It's, it's, and you uh, have pictures to prove it. That's all that matters, as long as you get that a, one. It's a photo walking organization. The drinking part is significant because it it indicates socializing so is that what that's what you does? I think it's at Google they do that too in all other places they're all drink I think they drink all the time well no the thing is we have a lot of people that come to the photo walks that don't drink anything and it's fine it's not like you have to drink to be a part of the photo walk um, but they've been really successful their their chapters are all across the world the United States and internationally we've got Germany and Tokyo and tons of places in the US you need to um, click San Francisco. San Francisco. Michael's, Michael's one of our leads in San Francisco. So basically, Drink and Click basically is a photo walk every a couple of times a month that leads to drinking. Or well, right? we go to bars and restaurants. We hit those places and then walk in between them. And if you want to have a drink when you're at the bar, you can. If you just want to chill and talk and laugh, you can. You ever have people that drink but don't take photos? I'm sure yeah, there's something to do that. Michael's like, that's me. <laughs> drink, drink, and drink. So talk about about that. I mean, when you guys go on photo walks, I feel like I've been on a bunch. I feel like they're more social. They're like, it's time to socialize, not take pictures. Do you, is that both. what it's like? It's well, both. I think, I think the huge thing that is very appealing to, to people about photo walks is that there's such a social element, the ability to connect with all these people that we've met online and, and people whose work we've admired kind of, you know, in this digital sense, but now we have kind of an excuse or a motivation to get out of the house and to meet them in person and to spend some time with them. And then we're still taking photos, so we're, we're all doing this thing that we like and we get each other and it's like, I don't know, it's like when you're with your friends who aren't photographers and they get kind of annoyed every time you want to stop and take a picture of something or whatever, and that just doesn't happen when you're on a photo walk. Everybody's like, yeah. So, so I do a lot of food porn and I'm, I'm not like, I you mean, do. You do level. a lot of food porn. I do some food Friday porn and, and whatever. Friday nights, but a Saturday nights. 
And so what I'll do, so I don't, do you have this experience where I'm sitting at the table and when the food comes, I prevent people from eating and digging in. They're like, food! I'm like, wait, I have to pull out my phone and take the yeah. picture. Does that, do you guys ever do that or see that and does that annoy the hell out of you? Or? Yeah. I love that with sushi. Every time I get, there's a sushi restaurant, it's just, the presentations are beautiful and I always have to take a picture and then I'm always like, crap, it just doesn't do the picture justice. I'm like, wait, can I go get a studio light and then do it? <laughs> Well, your sushi cannot get cold, so there's that. But see, yeah, he posts a picture I, of his sushi, and then later he deletes it. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. I had one on. I had one on my stream. Wasabi. Until about two days ago, and it was beautiful. And then I was like, "What the hell is that?" So I deleted it. What? <laughs> did you delete it because of the way it looked, or because you're like, I'm not, "It's a picture of sushi." No, like, I deleted it the way it looked. It was taken with my phone. It was the restaurant lights. So I didn't even have like a window that I could use. It was just. Meh, lighting. If you want to see, if you want to see what Scott is up to, you have to make sure you check his stream regularly. Because you have to screw around and try to go back a few days later and see what he was doing. Because he's gonna delete that stuff. He's creating demand. <laughs> that is smart, Scott. Scott, you're doing a smart. You, no one else is doing that. You're deleting the picture. So if, you, if you don't see it, what it, it's like Snap. Uh, what is that? Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat. We're, Snapchat. We're just, Why Snapchat. Did I do that? Snap. No, I, well, I, I do. Probably, I've probably deleted maybe four or five things off my stream in the last year. I mean, it's it's not a common occurrence, but it's always... It's more off your Instagram, right? That's where it goes away. No, I don't, I don't do Instagram. I don't you do Instagram. don't do it? Is it? Are you above it, or you just don't have time for it? Well, I don't care for I don't care for phone photography, so... Okay, so... Why that's would why I end really... the world with stuff I really don't like? Now, when you say you don't care for it, is it that there's no way you can take a picture with a phone and like it? Right. Okay. Come on, you can't have disliked my photo of the dick sandwich graffiti I found, Scott. Well, that was art. You guys, see, I, I can appreciate stuff that you've taken, but when I take it myself, I'm extra critical of yeah. what I've taken. So I can appreciate, like, street photography. I can look at other people's street photography and go, wow, that's awesome. And I take a picture, I'm like, it's people in a street. <laughs> Why yeah, but I those people have souls and emotions, man. Yeah, well, I well, didn't you, capture that. <laughs> you have a thing that's, like, your thing, and you're really great at it, and it makes sense to just be very focused on that, I think, too. This is where I disagree as the non-photographer. I feel like people, like Thomas Hawk, you know him to, to take these land, these beautiful pictures of areas, and he, he mixes it up. He, he has the... But it's like, once in a while, I would love to see some Thomas Hawk pictures of... Like just people hanging out, you know. He does. He does. All right, I'm not saying he doesn't, but I'm just saying like I was using him as an example because he he's probably drinking some wine right now and not watching this, so I can say. But my point is, is that do you guys feel like I just feel like I want to see variety. I want to see like I no photographer would ever put up their raw photos, would they? Out of their camera. Uh, I I will do it um, if I'm if I'm proving a point. Like I I was getting into a discussion with uh, people on skin smoothing for portraits. Now portraits is what I what I do. And yeah, yeah. skin smoothing is, I, I abhor it. And, and everybody's like, okay, apply a Gaussian blur. And I'm like, okay, everything you're going to say after that, I'm going to ignore because you don't know what you're doing. You know, the skin is never going to look natural. Well, then you just add noise and suddenly that's a human again. Like, so I was in this big discussion, so I posted it before and after. And I'm like, there. Now, the after looks like skin and the before looks like skin. That's the way you're supposed to do it. So every so often <laughs> I'll leak one. But I, I'm, I'm really, it's, yeah, I, I don't like to show my before and afters because, well, uh, usually I'm, and I'm shooting women, so you, the women don't want to see what they look like out of the camera. They want to see. Oh. Women. No, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. If, if someone were to say to you, "Here's the picture that's untouched," you're gonna go, "No," mm, you know. And, and a lot of us, I look at it kind of like you're, you have a responsibility. Yeah. That if you're you gonna do. take a picture of somebody. And they want to feel good about themselves. You're going to produce a picture that that you think, wow, that like that's a great picture of you. And then, and they, then they made that wow. more. They're like, what? You posted what? Well, yeah, so just... so if you take a picture of somebody and it's horrible, you know, it makes them look fat. It, it just does everything that you would. But wait. fat is beautiful. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. That I'm saying you could still take a picture of somebody who's overweight and have it be a beautiful picture. Right. Or you can take a picture of them overweight and it makes them look extra overweight. No, but I get that. My point is, if you take a bad picture of somebody, I don't ever want them to see that picture. I mean, that, that's a, that's potential psychological damage to them. You go, <laughs> I'm fatter than I thought. You know, you, you think about as a, as a photographer, you have some some responsibility to the way that people feel about you know what you. Photograph. So when you guys see a picture that's of somebody that's just god awful, do you feel for them? Do you? Does it go? Do you? 
put your hands well, on your face? Like, what is it dramatic for you, Scott? Do you cry? Whiskey? What? I would I would sooner tell somebody that my that my lighting was bad and or the picture didn't turn out or something along that line, and I would give them a crappy picture. Yeah, if, I think if I look at it and I think they look awful in the photo, I wouldn't post it. No. 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 But, but well, you, if you can retouch a photo, and I'm not saying like Luke will have the crap out of him and make him skinny. I'm saying if you retouch the photo and remove the the obvious things that could have been removed um, with makeup or styling or or whatever or lighting, um, if you can retouch it that way and post it and make it look as good as it could possibly look. And I'm proud of that picture, then that's what I'm going to put up there. So, you know, I, I typically won't post one that's, that's. And I don't shoot landscapes so much. I don't shoot, I shoot tractors, barns, beer. A, far, a <laughs> farm is a, is a landscape, isn't it? Kind sort of. of. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. And way so, way, actually. <laughs> so, you said you don't you don't take phone photography. And so, in, so these, these Instagram and all these phone, like, I mean, what is your feeling about Instagram? I mean, is it. I mean, I don't. I mean, to me, you take a picture, you can admire the picture, and if you get into it now with Google Plus, you can literally see the camera they use, and the frame rate, right, and all that those details about the picture. Yeah. Does it take the? Do you do, as photographers do you like seeing all that information, or do you I like? Love yeah, you love seeing all that. That's great. Yeah, it's a learning tool, too. I like I like watching other people's stuff and seeing it, but I guess I'm extra critical of what I produce, not what other people produce. I can enjoy somebody's stuff that's not perfect and go, wow, you know, that's a great picture. I would have done it differently, but that does I don't say that to myself. I'm just like, wow, it's a great picture. It's not mine. I don't judge it the same way. Scott, let me ask you a question. Did you call up your wedding photographer and scream at your wedding photographer or after you critiqued all the pictures? No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm saying well, literally were you very like do you get critical of like do, of to that degree? Where it's the, well, that's a difficult one because I, I actually purchased my first camera for my honeymoon. So my, I bought a Pentax PZ10 film camera for, we went to Bermuda, and that was 21 years ago on the 3rd. So I was not a photographer until... Did you get married five. when you were, like, 15? No, I was 24. I was speaking so, of. Um, it's making I, you feel like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's okay, but the audience, the, the viewing audience knows. I meant beautiful. So I, I, I don't, I've only been a photographer for, uh, since 2009. So I don't look back at those pictures with a different eye and say something. So they're they're done. They're they're great. They're fine. Would so I have done like, it differently? Yeah, I'm not a natural light guy. I would have taken a, a an Einstein or a Profoto with me and lit that thing. <laughs> well, it's just like the cliche the cliche that whatever you have around is your camera. That cliche about oh everybody's a photographer. Does that bother you guys or is it true? Um, you're I don't like know. how do I answer that? Depends on what you mean by that. I mean, everyone it's like stand-up comedian, right? Them. Everyone could be like, "Oh, everyone's a stand-up comedian." Well, what does that mean? I, mean, I have a, I have a good a good way to, to add a metric to that. Yes, is, please add more to that. When when I first started shooting, um, I would just take pictures of stuff, and then like a couple months later, I'm looking, I'm like, "Hi, hey, I should have done this." And then after a while, you start being able to see as a photographer. So like your photographer's eye comes into play, and you start to be yeah. able to look at something, and, and you'll see like, "Oh, you know, I like a picture of that bench, but that." that crooked little screw that's really rusty right there, that's the picture I want. So you start to see, and I think that after you get the photographer's eye, no matter what camera you have, now you're able to do something with it. But if you don't have that eye, you, you don't have any compositional skills, you don't have any ability to see, then you're just taking pictures of the random things, and unless you have a focus on improvement, I think you're just going to continue to kind of spray and pray. and you Spray know. and pray? Yeah, I never even heard. That. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's, so, that's what so, I but, do with many Is spring. that what you do? Yeah. So, but isn't there a difference, like, taking the picture is one skill, and then editing it is a totally different skill, right? Mm -hmm. I think that it's different. It's a different kind of skill, yeah. And so you could be an amazing, you could take amazing pictures, but you can't edit for crap, or you can't take good yeah. pictures, and you could, because a lot of people will take pictures that are crappy and make them better. I do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you're not alone. You're not alone. You are not alone. I think they're uh, except for the ones of you in the bathtub. Those are perfect, just the way they are. Right? You have to stop. Okay. <laughs> She's like, as, as if she doesn't take those publicly. No. I don't even know which photos. Are, which photos are we talking about? I, think uh, I wasn't talking about the private ones you sent to me in Monaco. I was talking about the ones people see. Anyway. Don't. Don't. Don't.
She is not <laughs> I don't want, I'm joking. You've never, I don't you know. Do you know how many before. emails I'm going to get to get on my private list? <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be phone calls. There's gonna be small but dedicated plus community. mentions. And... But thank you because I can charge a lot for that. You can, you it's can a pretty awesome project. <laughs> right it is pretty awesome. You know, so this idea that nobody, everyone wants to see nude females, but nobody wants a pink dick. Is that true, Lotus, or that's cool? Yeah, I'm not gonna say anything that's gonna have people like texting, you? emailing okay. me dick pics after the I show. I don't want anybody there. to email you any kind of no. I mean, unless it, they're they're edited well, then it's okay. I think in general, not even just genitalia wise, but I think in general that female, the female form is just considered more artistically beautiful than Pleasure. male form. I think just in general, across the board, I think you'll find that is thought. Um, and I don't know if it's that there's some a kind of a softness or something to to the female form. That's not there with the male form. I you mean, you can say it. It's hair. So it. Scott was talking about um, okay. shooting, you know, a, a farmhouse and a, and a landscape, and then like if we could get a model in there. I mean, would you think first? I want some guy, or I want to shoot like. There's what something. Think? I think there's just something about the female form that's more artistically pleasing. In general, I think that that's the consensus. Among it's more artistically pleasing, but then there's plenty of women that like. That, are sh that enjoy them. I think males form. are great models, and I think it also depends on what you're looking for and what kind of scene you're trying to capture. But I think, I mean, because we're talking about this, and you asked me, although you did try to go towards like, let's talk about cock instead of actually. No, art. I was, I was talking, I talking about. The <laughs> I'm trying to be funny. But everybody cares general. about the lens cap you're using. What? I mean, the lens frame. I mean, the type <laughs> of lens you're using. Is what I, I think said. when you're going in that direction, it just depends on is it does the woman want to receive. Anything like that from that person? <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Yeah, there's that. More I mean, than whether like the you know packages. Yeah, I don't think people should be sending any of that stuff unless it's wanted. But even then, Anthony Weiner has to be careful when he does that. But um, it's true. So, so for what what has been your best photo walk experience? I hear Michael talked a little bit about his first one, which sounded like one of his best in San Francisco. But has anything Gosh. crazily unexpected happened or? Or Honestly, I, I don't think I've ever been on a photo walk that I didn't have a really great time on. So there aren't any that really, really stick out. And then I think there's also a difference between like we have we'll have like small local photo walks versus like these really big trips. You know, like Michael was talking about the one in Death Valley. And certainly, like there's something so much more impactful about something like that. It's a big trip. You see all these really amazing, like mind blowing landscape places that you get to shoot at, and then it's a, an extended thing. So those are really fun, um, but I mean, I love every drink and click that I go to as well. I've made so many friends locally and connections that I wouldn't have made otherwise. Um, and I have there's a really great photo walk that I went on. I wanted to screen share um, a Please. group shot. Please screen share. And I'm, well, and as you screen share, I'm gonna Tim Clary is watching, and he's asking questions about real quick. He just said, "Hey, yeah, you just tuning in." He said, "Spray and see." He didn't know about spray and pray either. Most of the time, you guys, I want to ask you about some of these lingos. Oh, look at that. That was from the photo walk. This is from the High Line yeah. um, in New York, and you've got some familiar faces here. We're all Matt's in this photo. We've got Alan Shapiro, Titus Winters, Deshaun Craddock, Vivian Goudsois, mm -hmm. PJ Evidon, Kathleen right. Kent, Paula Layton, Frank Storm. Sweet. Who's the uh, Who's the creepy guy in the back? Second? It's always It's always Rappaport. I'm, uh, <laughs> I can only I don't know how to make non creepy. I feel like the, I look like the you're at East, the guy from Eastbound and Down. It really scares me. Kenny Powers. No. I wish I could find the one Kenny where Powers Alan. Friend. That's what scares me. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. Little. I wish I could find the. I can't. I, I know I've got it somewhere. There's a photo too where we were doing the test shots for that, and Alan like turned around and just like gave me his butt in the. Oh, that's nice. That's a really great one too. <laughs> Give me Alan turned around and gave me his butt. All right. Give me first, his butt. It's a first. So what was uh, the question was about spray and pray? Oh no, yeah. Tim was saying, like I said, I didn't never heard spray and God, pray. And you, since you're the one that mentioned that phrase, do you want to define that? Well, I, I have a, uh, I'll give you an example. So we'll say we do a model shoot, and I'm going to set up my lights, and I'm going to pose the model, and it'll probably take me a few minutes to pose and get the po pose the way I want it. And I'll take a picture, and I'll take maybe a couple. And then I'll repose the model. I'll take a couple of pictures. I'll move some lights around until I, the lights match the pose. I'll take a couple of pictures. And at the end of the day, let's say an eight-hour day, I'll have maybe between 200 and 400 pictures, and that's a lot for me. 
Uh, I used to have a studio partner who would shoot the same model. Say, let's say the first hour he's going to have that model. He would walk out with 2,000 pictures. Yeah. So it's basically click, 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 click the whole time. I mean, in an hour's time, you got to click the shutter a whole lot per minute to get yeah. the 2,000. So he would fill a, a card or two every hour. And I'm like, okay, at the end of the day, he's going to have about every incremental, you know, thing you can imagine for that model. He didn't move his lights around either, so, it, you know. See, that's all... odd, because I would think that at least maybe he was insecure about getting things just right, so he would have, like, when you're saying he's, like, taking such an excessive amount that he would have, like, changed things, because he's not sure if he's getting it right each time, but he's just taking too many pictures. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, it's, so it's, I called it spraying pranks. So at the end of the day, he's going to post three pictures, but he's, he's you know, took 2,000. So you're but, saying that that takes away from the skill. You're saying that it's just like luck. They're like, all right, he just he didn't really try yeah. to take that perfect picture. He took, like, thousands, so he's going to get some good ones. Is that what you're saying? Right. I, I would assume that's his mindset. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. But, yeah, I guess it's kind of like a, if you're not sure, just take a whole bunch of pictures and hope at the end of the day that one or two worked out well, okay. That's think, totally the definition of spray and pray, what you just right. said. Right? But I think, I, think, uh, I think slightly different, you know, spray and pray in my mind really... Uh, we don't want to, to... I don't want to know what you define. Uh, <laughs> so you keep it PG-13, Lotus. All right. <laughs> Mother... No, sorry, Michael, no, sorry. Good, it good is, uh, it's, uh, it's more of like if you don't have... So if you're in a studio, like, you know, yeah, I don't really understand taking 2,000 pictures, but... Like, for instance, last night I was at the San Jose Earthquake Major uh, League Soccer game, uh, and I was shooting from the field. Uh, it's a very fast-paced game. I didn't have a monopod, so I was spraying and praying. I was just shooting nonstop, trying to get that perfect, because I just needed a, a handful of good uh, images. For, real quick, uh, real quick, tell people what a monopod is, people that don't know what, what that is. It's like a tripod, but with one leg. It's perfect for uh, sport shooting. And I'll show you exactly why I needed a monopod. Michael always brings his monopod with him. Because <laughs> I was shooting with this. Wait, uh, I was shooting with this with no monopod. <laughs> Michael's making a package. Oh, there it is. Whoa! That's Whoa! A big, got a big, uh, whatever you call that. <laughs> oh, he's going for the monopod. Sure that, Matthew. I will. Are you going to do the double monopod? He's happy to see you. I'm just happy to see Where's the other one? We get two for the price of one. Uh, Can yeah, you lift you two of those at the same time? Whoa, I see one's bigger. Right. Lotus is very excited. <laughs> Lotus, why that drool right now? So when you're shooting with this, with no monopod? Whoa, yeah, are you going to tell me more pictures? <laughs> <laughs> Stop that one. I think I keep sh not shooting in my face. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, Tim Clary is watching us, so he's so uh, he getting not to get too much back to the peen, but he says I agree with Lotus. You look at but if you look at classical art, there are tons of peens or penis peni. The David brings That's a fun true. example. I wonder if it's our American puritanical culture discuss. So do you wow. think that we as Americans uh, are too censorship, too sense, too uh, we're not too sensitized to that? And you're the you European know, I think model. There is I do think there's a sensitivity towards it um, in like terms of like a whole societal viewpoint on kind of males and and sexualizing males and too and 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 like the whole idea of male aggression and male predators and all of that kind of I think bundles into it and I think what what he's referring to is probably at a time and a culture where that wasn't as much the case. So you're saying that we've become more and more disgusting as time has gone on. No, I think that I think there's a much, a lot more cautious view over males in that role in the first place. Right, but it is. I weird. mean, so like, it, it, and here's like a weird example to kind of. I did what I mean. Look, societally, my son is very um, extroverted, and he'll run up to anybody and do anything. And there were several times where he would run up to just like random people on the playground and be like he would hug anyone and be like oh hi and it would always be funny to see when he would like run up to one of the dads like somebody he doesn't know and it's like a dad at the playground and like just like hug them and be like hi and it was like versus the reaction of him doing that to a female on the playground the guy is like totally freaked out because he doesn't want anyone to think anything 
Because automatically, I think the, the males are viewed differently than females, where it's like... Just that it's not acceptable for him to be hugging a strange kid. Right, so I think overall, in general, the sexualization and the vision that we have of males is, is different than as females, and I think that was different also in the time that it seems like he's, he's referring to. Right, and it's funny you bring up your child, because I would say, in general, when it comes to boys and girls... They are free with their privates. They're like, hello, here you go. They don't care. They don't have that. <laughs> it's true. They don't have it in their head. When I was when I was like five, it's a, is there a problem? Or I don't, I mean, I'll tell you this. When I was five in kindergarten, my best friend told me, Joey Witowski, I remember it, told me to sunshine the class. I didn't know it was wrong. I took it out and showed my my kindergarten class my peen. I didn't think anything of it. I was just having fun. And then that was the first time I heard, like, our after school, there were, like, fifth graders, and they were like, uh... Why did you do that? I said, because he told me to. And they're like, well, that's the first time I heard if he told you to jump off the Empire State Building, would you do it? So <laughs> that was that ruined that for me. But I, in general, I mean, I, I do you think you know as we get older and older, we become we we become more reserved and we're we're not as you know we it just it's it we hold back. I think you learned I learned about societal expectations for sure. <laughs> uh, speaking of, there's your child. <laughs> By the microphone. Good time. Half naked child is on. Uh, oh, I think yeah. I think you need to put your finger up there. All right, cover up. There we go. Perfect example. But uh, great question, Tim. And and yeah, I don't. I mean, do you guys have you guys ever? Photo, I mean, I think Scott has. He's photographed. You've all photographed nudity or no? What have your experiences been? Uh, yeah. Like? You're talking about somebody is... else's nudity? Or... Well, we all, yeah, besides yourself, besides yourself, love. I haven't, well, I, I take that back. I did a topless shoot for a friend of mine who needed something for a project. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't it. You see that? That completely shut him down. He didn't know how to follow up with that one. <laughs> I have nothing, yeah. I can't share those, though, because she didn't want them to be shared publicly, like in social media. But she had a like a specific project that she was doing for something, and so I did that for her. But that's the only time I've done like a model shoot that, where there was any nudity. I got a girl on Playboy. Oh yeah. Yep. Tell us about that. Uh, I took nude photos, and she got a Playboy with me. <laughs> that's it. She was Pretty just, like, she just took off her clothes. You went, yeah. you went snap and Playboy. That's that yeah. was the story. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, she she took him. She, I didn't know her. She contacted me through, just found my website and said, hey, I'm trying to submit photos for Playboy. Do you mind shooting them? I love your work. And I was like, yeah, of course. What am I going to do? Say no. Right. And I remember asking Scott this uh, during his show about the comfortable, being comfortable with the models. But, you know, every model is different. And especially <clears throat> if you've never shot nudity before, is it, is it weird to try to focus on the picture and not on the body and try to arrange no, it in a certain way? Or... No, I don't think so. I mean, you know, Lotus knows me as much of a perv as I am. I'm very professional. <laughs> but I think just, you know, I'm very talkative and I'm very social. Um, so uh, just talking and being very, you know, loose and fun right off the bat is, is key to it because if you are uncomfortable at all, even in the beginning, it's going to show to her or to the to whoever you're shooting, and it's going to set a bad tone, and that tone is not going to get any better if if right. uh, if you don't improve that that attitude quickly. Not a bad attitude, but you got to be comfortable. You just got to be, and you know, the first couple times you shoot nude or or even just portraits, it doesn't matter. The first couple times where you're trying to direct a model, you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be cautious. You're going to be shy. You're not going to know how to really direct them. Um, but it's a you've just got to accept the fact that it's probably going to take you 5, 10, 15, 20 tries before you're able to walk into a room uh, and just start it with a good, you know, attitude and be like, all right, this is what we're going to do, and I need you over there, you know, this kind of look, blah, 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 and, and you just, it's a trained, you know, uh, skill. You just get it eventually, but, but, you know, if you try no matter what type of portrait photography or fashion or whatever you're doing, um, don't ever get discouraged if, if you're not getting those that, you know, if you're not really directing them well, don't get discouraged. Just keep trying, keep trying. Um, but to even and, get to get more specific, just for the hell of it, because I'm, I'm probably never going to be shooting naked girls, not for public consumption. Uh, <laughs> what the Like, if you think about a girl with her breasts, you think about a guy with his package, they move around. Like, how do you just to get it? Why? Why you have to deal with it as a photographer? Do you not? I'm, 
People do that. I don't do know. Do you, like motion, do you like motion photography? Just get them to swing it and take a shot and do some long <laughs> No, but like if they're posing, right, and one's one is the other way or one's not. I mean, I mean, you these are real. Am I, are these not real things? Am I making this Sure, up? it is. You got to stage things and have have a fluffer and all that good stuff. <laughs> oh my, sure. I um, believe in. I believe in the <laughs> joking, Jack. Well, if that's what you. <laughs> if that's if that's the kind of picture you want. Michael's the Michael Boner horrific over there. Um, true story, Michael is called Boner by Lotus Sweat. Is that a secret? I don't know. No. But, no, no. Well, actually, that, it, even it, if they don't it, know his last name. <laughs> They're like, he's a boner. Oh, yeah. But we like him anyway. He's got a ball. Uh, PJ's watching. PJ's like, haha, the subject matter has diverged a bit. Just, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. We no, need I, I even posted, I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a new to my stream today, it's the last picture I posted. And it's funny, is I could post it on G+, and I can't post it on Facebook, because it'll get reported instantaneously. Yeah, G+, yeah. tends to be a lot more tolerant of artistic news. And they know the difference. I mean, like on Flickr, for instance, it started out as artistic news, and it got out of hand real fast, and it never recovered. And Google has, I think, kept a good, uh, you know, it's, it's a rule that you don't break, but... Um, to a certain extent, you can break it, but that's uh, you know, yeah. yeah and, Tumblr, and, right? Tumblr is big for the for the nudity, right? Yeah, but you know, Tumblr is big for everything. It's just weird. <laughs> it's like a big yeah. mess of stuff all over the place. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of like it reminds me of the old uh, um, uh, was it the one that just turned all music now? Um, MySpace. Came, yeah, MySpace. It reminds me of the old MySpace. <laughs> I mean, it was always music, but yeah. <laughs> Remember that music thing that was all now all music now. Anyway, well, yeah, it was it was obviously popularized by bands, but I mean there were everything on there, and now it's more of like a Pandora to me. I use it to play music. That's I don't do anything. And else it's on funny it. that you mentioned MySpace because I just saw Lotus over there, and she was someone I think complimented her or MySpace did, and and, and we were messing around with. It's funny too because MySpace has circles, although they're connected. So I'm like, they're connections, not, <laughs> yeah. Connections. And then you're like. Is this because a lot of people on Google Plus are over there, so it feels just like we took, we all jumped up and just <laughs> planted, yeah, our, planted just... ourselves over there for a bit. I moved over there initially, but I just never did anything with it. It's just, it's just sits there for music. You just went out on a date. You didn't, you didn't like. I, I still post there every other day or something like that. I put my content there. I just figure it's another place for my content to live. If people are actually actively using it, it's. I really think that I think I think the music integration is really brilliant. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. You could literally listen to anything at any point. You don't have to pay for it. It's all there. And I think there were some audio ads. And that there's, like, no glitter badges anymore, so that's really nice. You, miss, you don't miss the glitter badges? No. No? no. I remember my, my <laughs> old MySpace. I had it so, like, I had so many uh, photo bucket links in there. <laughs> It would, it would literally take probably three and a half minutes to load my page. It was awesome. <laughs> There's no no escape no escape. Like a no escape. website. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna offer up um, a comment on your previous thing about when you're when you're photographing nudity. Yeah, please. Is, uh, you after a while you get just a mindset of um, you're an artist and you're creating art at that time. There is absolutely no sexual thing going on at all. You, you've kind of shut off that part of your brain and you're focused on getting the picture that you want. And at least I am. I'm, I'm. I'm focused on okay. I need to light this way, and okay. And it's funny because when you when you light women, you have to pay attention to how the breasts are lit, and you're like, okay, you're gonna have to turn your chest this way, and you get very directive. You don't think about. I just told her to point her boobs over there, but that's effectively what you're doing. You say you need to do this, and you get up and move a light, and check it to make sure it's right, and you get that perfect picture. And you're, okay, that was that was when you. And not to get to not to be not much serious. Boob sweat is a real thing, right? That you have to deal with. Uh, well, you keep the, the the studio at right temperature. You don't have a problem. Oh, you know, okay. I didn't. All right. Well, if you're outside in the sun, anyway. I don't shoot outside. You or don't. I yeah, oh no, I shot outside a couple times, but yeah, I prefer inside. Just yeah. with the barn and the beer, occasionally. The barn and the beer, and the yes. beer was in the, the Harley, strategically the located. Yeah. For the best shot. Uh, we have a lot of questions. A lot of people watching. Appreciate it. Eight million people watching right now. Of course, minus. Woo. <laughs> No, uh, Steven Sauce is at, do you guys, how do you say his name, Sauce Do you guys know him? He says, I have to ask, what do you think of the new wave of digital 3D films? I gotta get a nerd question in here for photography. Uh, new wave of, oh, oh, 3D, does he mean like movies? Or does he mean photography? Okay. I think he means, 
Do you? What do you? Because digital three D films could be three D glasses, right? Or just uh, what about the, uh, the the camera that can the um, the camera that can refocus later um, using a photon capture? Lytro. Yeah, the Lytro. So maybe if he, well, that. what do you guys think of that then? If that's maybe what he doesn't need. I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, I haven't played with one. I think he's talking about movies. He probably is. So what? Three D in general. So what do you think of? I mean, I don't know. If we're talking about movies. I just feel like it's a. They, if you don't film in 3D, it's a cheap way to make more money, or not. It's a well, cheap not way so to make cheap. more money. A 3D film. I it used to be a different way. I used to 3D my photography sometimes. Do you? Yeah, I have an example. Show us an example of your 3D work. Let me find out how I can screen share this bad boy. Hmm? So, because I remember when 3D came back a big way was Avatar. They were like, oh, yeah. 3D, that was the big. Well, I think Avatar opened the way to bringing all these 3D movies, but Never been a fan of wearing glasses. Uh, I like IMAX, so IMAX gives you this really crazy experience. But, uh, but so what, as, Scott, you got it ready? Oh, there we go. Hang on, that didn't work. There oh, I just opened up the questions. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a bunch in there. <laughs> I didn't realize. All right, so, like, um, like this one. So, the clock in the background is actually, um, a 3D model that I created. It looks a lot like a movie poster. Really, like it looks almost like a, like you could that could be a one sheet for a movie. Well, I wanted I wanted something that was uh, kind of steampunkish to go with the the um, Rachel Frank design here. I love her work as a as a wardrobe designer and stylist, and so I needed some sort of and I, I looked forever for like some sort of giant clock, and I thought you know I could just I could just make one. So I used 3D to make the clock. Uh, and then throw it in the background. It doesn't have to be perfect, so it didn't take me that long to make. It doesn't have to be very detailed. And then all the other noise, the particles you see, those things are actually uh, a do on the inside windshield of my car. I got up in the morning, went out in the car, and there's dew in the windshield, and the sun was coming through, so I just shot pictures of, the, <laughs> like, 40 pictures of dew in the windshield. And that's the background and the, and the bits of uh, bokeh that you see. Um, but, yeah, 3D, I use 3D, so when I do... Um, Photo sometimes. Very cool. This actually got this is my uh, uh, first yeah, magazine cover. Uh, actually, second magazine cover for this year. This is uh, Chicago. A group Rock called, on, called, man. So talk a little bit. About, so how do you? How does a magazine cover happen? Is it just they call you or or a No, you submit. You submit. So you submit. get the editorial calendar. Yeah. So if they say we're shooting, say steampunk is going to be this specific month, you can submit photos and say, okay, these are our steampunk. And if you shoot uh, a whole bunch of them, like there's actually other ones in here uh, from this shoot that are steampunk oriented. Cool. Um, so the, the background here is actually the uh, Science Fiction Museum in Seattle. Um, We've been to Seattle just a month or two earlier, so I just tossed it in the background um, because cool. I wanted again something not distinct, but you know, interesting to that theme. I don't think I have any other. Do you ones. ever shoot specifically for some kind of? Magazine or theme yeah. or contest yeah. or whatever it may be. Yeah, in fact, that's thing. that's usually my main motivator. Um, when I do shoot, like like Lotus had, um, there's a, a selfie contest they have each month, and although it's been cell phone photos and things like that that I haven't played, uh, the I, I love those as motivators to get out and shoot because a lot of times the model approach and say I want to do a shoot and I love your work and I'm like okay what do you want to do and they're like uh and I'm like okay. I need an idea. I don't just want to get together and shoot pictures of me in your underwear. I don't need that in my portfolio, and it's that. And that's the kind of thing that I get paid to shoot. Um, I want to shoot something creative. You know, I want to make some art. So I love themes. And if a, a, a magazine releases an editorial calendar or a, um, a book manufacturer might come to you and say, we, we'd like a photo like this for a book or a poster or a CD, Cover. I love projects like that. Those those are just really. What I, I have like. to be honest. When you said underwear, all I could think about was Walter White and his tidy whities So, <laughs> sadly enough, Michael. What about Michael's got some pictures in the background. He's got uh, that he has hanging on his wall, which are pretty cool. He's traveled the world too. So that's a. So he's got the outside, and Scott's got the inside. And uh, so are those. So basically, those are all. So you take the picture, you edit the crap out of it, or and then. You have somebody do that for you to get them on your wall to put them to superimpose them or make a portrait. Michael, are you muted? Oh, I did not. Yeah, hear. I was muted. Were you <laughs> farting? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. 
So wait, wait uh, so what were you saying? About how so how did you? It? So how did you decide to who made who took those made those photos on your wall like that? And uh, Bay uh, Photo Lab. Woo. Bay Photo Lab. <laughs> These are all metal prints. Metal prints. That's what I was going yeah. for. Product but, but, placement. It's going for the metal. But these actually, only two of these photos are mine. So oh. the Oops. one uh, right over there, that one, where my hand is over, that's mine. Peace. And then these are not. I could name all the photographers, awesome photographers. But if you want to, Scott, sure. Scott, show me the one that you printed out of mine that you have hanging in your office. And then that one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to <laughs> let us, like, show me mine. Where's mine? <laughs> Where's mine, baby? He doesn't have one. Michael, do you have <laughs> Michael? Do you have one of lotuses around you? No. No, I need one of lotuses. Damn it. Which is there one there's you put up specifically? Or? Uh, there's a lot. Would her face be in the picture? Uh, hopefully, yeah. Well, because lotus. I have a photo that... site with many wonderful prints that do not include any part of my body. I know, but I gotta go through and pick one. So this is my office. This is not my home. I'm yeah, this is his work, right. and I'm totally just busting his balls. It's not. So, I'm not so serious. I need. No, I know. Uh, I need something semi-clothed for the office. Semi but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've actually got a lot of photos that uh, that I'm due to. Uh, I need to add more. Like I've got so much empty wall space still. There's uh, a lot of amazing photography for sale at Smug Mug. There is. Woo! There is a ton of it. There's a ton of it. Clap. 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 Woo. Clap. So should we get into that? Should we get into the fact that there's a ton of websites out there, even though Smug Mug is great, that there's a ton of places to sell your photos or, or places to interact with photos? Like, if you're someone, whether you're whatever level of photographer you are, how do you go about selling your pictures online? Do you want to talk about that at all? How do you go about selling them? Do you just put them up everywhere you can, or do you are you selective? Is this something you want to talk about? Well, I mean, for me, uh, people miss... People assume incorrectly when they're a landscape photographer that ah, I did the same thing when I first started. I had all these photos and, you know, they sucked back then, but I thought they were cool because, you know, they were cool for what I did, but now I realize that they were terrible. But all my friends and family would be like, oh, those are so amazing. I would totally buy a print, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, man, if I just, like, had a way to You don't think friends, they were being honest? You think that all your friends and family said that because they were trying to make you feel good? They must have liked those photos, no? Well, I mean, you're a no, they, I can't imagine your family lying to you like that. They they like the photos, but uh, but they were terrible. I mean, now but they were an Alan Shapiro level. level. No, I get it. No, and they're still not Alan Shapiro <laughs> level, but but I'm getting there. You but, you just uh, need to get closer to that flower or that bee. Yeah, like, like right up to its right up to its bum. But yeah, so uh, I thought I was like, man, all I gotta do is create a smug mug site and sell prints, and I'm gonna make a million bucks. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> It's so working out pretty that. good for you so far. You took some partners, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I did that. And, and then uh, I didn't sell anything. And uh, and then I realized that just because you have the means yeah. and the site to sell your work doesn't mean you're going to sell your work. You still have to learn marketing. You still have to right. learn yeah. Can you say that sells. line about not selling anything again? If you – what did I say? I you forgot. said I didn't really – I tried and I didn't really sell anything. Do that again. I tried and I didn't really sell anything. I got I got I knew that was these. coming. That's it what she said. It was too uh, well. Uh, I don't, ah, I didn't do the rim shot. But I'm fine. <laughs> Why did I shut it? Why? I knew that was coming. <laughs> you gotta you gotta use the tools they give you. Smuggling's got a lot of tools, right? We do. We have tons of tools. Give us. You got two, three minutes. Give it uh, on the smug bug. Let's let's. Pour the smug mug for two or three minutes and talk about why. It, and if if uh, Scott or Lotus use it, why it's your job shit. hinges on this, Michael. This is your time to shine. Uh, Lotus, what do you have to say? Lotus, what, what how do you feel about, about smug mug? Well, actually, my main thing that I would say is the point that you just made. You can't just throw all your stuff onto any of the sites where you can sell. And there are a, there are a good handful of sites where you can sell your work, and it's not just about throwing it on there. It's about knowing what you're doing with it, too. If you don't say anything, if you don't market, if you don't find clients, you're not going to sell shit. Yeah, I've gotten, uh, I've gotten know, a lot of... Think... Yeah, I've, I've gotten a lot of emails from friends and people I know, and they go, you know, I've been, uh, uh, you know, I've been online with Smug Mug or this company, that company, and for five years I've never sold any of my work. 
And then I'll go on their social media posts that have four or 500 plus ones each post. And I go read through the description, and there's not one link to their smoke website. There's nothing well, that's there's, if you, you And I think it's a, there's a delicate balance, too, with that. There because is. If, if every post you make, if people feel like all you're trying to do is sell a print, it, there's, I think there's, that's a bad taste. You know? So I think you, if you do want to throw a link out there every now and then, I think that's the smartest thing to do, but not to do it with every post, either. Well, I completely agree, but, you know, Smug Mug and, and, you know, it's not just a site to sell your photography. It's a full website, right? So what right. I do is, like, every photo, I just say, hey, for a bigger version, for a more dynamic, high-res version, because Facebook and Google Plus will, you know, downsize, and <laughs> I'll say, go visit this photo on my website, and then I'll have a link right to the big light box on my Smug Mug site. So I'm not, That's smart. That's I'm not good. trying to sell it. I'm just saying, hey, go check it That's out. That's a good and, tip. Yeah, and then there is an add to cart button there, but I'm not telling you, hey, go buy a print, you know. So, so, but that brings up a really good point about social media in general. You know, do you? A lot of photographers, literally, every single post they make is a picture of their work, even if it's not selling it. There's a, a caption with it, and that's what they do. And your time is limited. Uh, Tim Clary talks about a little bit about that the question. You guys are all active in more or less every social network. How do you manage them all? And are there any automated posting tricks? So how do you guys feel about the time it takes to post in as many places as you post? And do you ever just go, you know what, I just want to post something funny that's not my own work today. Does that ever happen? Or do you feel like your audience would rebel and be like, how could you do that to us? No, I, I post different things to each each group. I, well, my Twitter is the mirror of whatever I post on Facebook because I really don't care. I'm not a Twitter guy, I just on there. The Facebook audience gets a different feed than the Google Plus audience. I find the Google Plus audience is much pickier about the photography and uh, Google Plus is trying to, I think, cater more to photographers, so um, I upload a much higher rate. Wait, hold on a second. There's a new Google Plus update about photography. Oops. So I, I like I like the, the higher resolution that Google Plus does. It doesn't compress the crap out of it. Um, Facebook, you, I mean, it treats everything like it's a cell phone photo and you have to upload, you have to do special upload things. If you upload as a PNG, it'll actually be decent because it doesn't compress it twice and it's just work. Now, I'd have to say that I, I don't upload there, but um, I treat the social networks different. My Facebook is for my friends and people that I've gotten to know because of Google+. Plus. Google+, Plus is a place where I'm cultivating new friendships and, you know, I, like, I met Trey on Google+, Plus and me and being my publisher, and then I met Thomas Hawk on Google Plus, and I met you know, all, all you guys on, on Google Plus, and eventually yeah. we became Facebook friends. So Facebook friends is, you know, it's, I use it for a different thing, so what I post there is more friend-oriented. Now, I, I went to school for physics, so I'm not a photographer by training, so I post a lot of science stuff to my Facebook okay. because that's a lot of my friends are science. So you see today, there's a science post, but there's no nude photo, where Google Plus, there's a nude photo, but no science. So... so Facebook I'm, is more of like who you really are. <laughs> right. Not that there. photography isn't a part of who you really are, but you're showing a little bit more of who you really are versus just is that the how you feel too well, or you just No, no, I'll, I'll post things to Google Plus that are science oriented, but I only post them to science circles because gotcha. the public in general doesn't care. I mean, I actually use the how circle do you know, pretty though, really? proactively. Like I post something on um, like the the comment today, so I'll post that, but it only goes to the science circles. There's no need to post it public. In my why do you feel there's no need? Like, what? How do you know that the public's gonna what they're gonna like or not? Like, I, I just you... made a decision that I'm my in your head. You're like, no, Scott, no. no I do it. I do it from time to time, but most of the time, I look. I view my Google Plus as it's a photography. The people are following me because of my photography, not because yeah. of my clients. I feel the same way. I I mean, I may share a few little things here and there that aren't photography based, but it's very rare on Google Plus. And I think that this, you said you made the decision, and I think if it's anything. Like what I my train of thought is, it's um, you don't want to chance really kind of starting to annoy the crap out of people who clearly have been following you for what your the, yeah, well, the greatest amount you. of your content has been. You're you know you're out. I'm personally, I mean, I'm saying, hey, I'm a photographer. This is why I'm here. This is what I do. If you want to follow me, this is what you're gonna get. So then, if I started posting like all kinds of other content, I feel like people might be like, I this is not what I wanted in my stream. So much, um, yeah. but and then there's also that I just. Do I you love guys think? Do, so do, you, guys, not, do like you guys a, think that people would revolt if you started changing, changing it up? Rev more? 
Revolt, no. Well, whatever word annoyed you said, but no, but you, you, know, get... like, you know, like I, I watch the science circles, for instance, and I there's a lot of politically charged things from time to time, and some people post mostly political stuff, and I have them in a science circle, and that annoys me. You know, I'm not following you for your political. Well, they don't know that though. Well, exactly, but at a certain point, I reach the point where I'm like, you know what, I, I'm following you for the wrong reason, and really, it's a signal-to-noise ratio. I no longer yeah. see what I wanted to see from you, so yeah. I'm going to go ahead and push you back into the public circle. Maybe I'll see you again someday, but... Um, yeah, when you, you say, uh, you mean uncircle them, or just put them in a general circle? I uncircle them. Oh, okay. And look, and this is the... And also, being able to post different things to specific circles, like he said he's doing, is is the is a brilliant reason for why we have circles. I mean, if you're carefully using them, you're using them for things like that, I think he's really, you know, kind of using this great benefit that we have of being able to post science stuff to the, our science right. circles. And Well, that's what's great about the circles in general is that you can, they could be for posting, they could be for reading, they could be for hanging out, they could be for events, yeah. they could be for all these different things and all the things that they haven't even done yet. So well, that's... Let me touch on one thing though that's really that really annoys me with cross posting, and I, I, I it's like road rage. I see someone post on Google Plus a, a picture, and then the only text on it is "follow me on Facebook," and then a link to Facebook. Oh yeah, like, I don't like, like that either. Wow, that that's a, a really great way to build Facebook traffic is by trying to take it from a place that hates Facebook. <laughs> No, that's not going to work. So I, I, I try and tell them, like, you know what, you're going to succeed a lot more on this social network. You know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Don't shove this over there because it's like I, I gave the analogy of I'm going to drive through a Harley convention on my Honda throwing business cards in your face hoping that that's going to lead to fandom, you know? You just, yeah. And if, and if you think of it in the other way, if you think of it as that they're coming to a place for something, it's even worse because it's like if you went to a restaurant for a meal and they told you to go across the street to the other restaurant to get it. I, mean, I, I brought feel this like... bag lunch with me and I'm here to eat and tell people about the great food across the street. <laughs> right. No, I agree. If comes to my comes to Google Plus and they follow me because they want to see my work there, I'm not going to tell them go somewhere else if you want to see it, you know? So you guys are saying that you do post, you guys do post other stuff besides your work, but it's either limited or private or extended or community somewhere else. Or you just, or you I think I just think it depends on where you are. Like on Flickr, obviously, all I post is photos there. It's what it's for. And no, I mean on Google Plus specifically. On Facebook, I think that there's, I think I probably do post more um, different parts of myself, and then uh, I think I have more friends and family there than than you know, contacts that are photographers only, although I found, and I, Scott kind of said this, that um, Facebook became much more vibrant for me after I had Google+, Plus because I started following all the people I met on Google+, Plus on Facebook, so it actually made Facebook better. Um, but yeah, I think I might post a little bit more, like if I see something that's funny, but I'm still very careful about what, I mean, I don't, just share everything I think is funny. I think I still, even though I, I will post the crappy phone photos, I will still kind of restrict what I They're post of my content because it is, it's my, my stream is my content. I also lock down what other people can share to my timeline and things like that because it's a representation as my, you know, public profile or whatever. Yeah, and um, it brings up a point too. It, a lot of people look at the two as competing, um, but they're, they're really different uses. For instance, if you're looking for a wedding photographer, trying to find that person on Facebook, that's not possible. I mean, you can search for a photographer, and then you have to friend them, they have to reciprocate, and then you can see their stream. And that's yeah. You, you can know, follow. Google. Can't you follow them though? Oh, you know, you, that's a recent thing though. Following sure. didn't occur um, until say in the last seven or eight months. You know, before that, it was, and, and even then, you have to enable followers. And most, you know, some people do that, some people don't, but it's still, it's hard to find them. I'm, I'm I do feel like Google Plus and Facebook go back and forth with features, like when Google Plus comes out with a feature, Facebook will do it, and then Facebook comes, like they go back and forth trying to match each other. I want to hear Bonacore, I want to hear about Bonacore's uh, posting styles, too. Well, styles. Um, <laughs> I don't have a style, really. I, I, what? I met you, you had style? Yeah, yes. no, no style, man. I've been wearing the same clothes since 1989. Uh, I've got no style, dude. Um, yeah, but posting style, I really don't <clears throat> have a posting style. I swear, I, I, I usually my same photos are going on Google Plus and Facebook, not at the same time. Usually days or even weeks apart. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I just I, I have the worst. Or, I'm the worst organized person in the world. I have. 
28 hard drives in my home. Half of them are dead. <laughs> and they, they weren't backed up. I mean, it's like I have no organization whatsoever. Only 28? On, what? Yeah. On my giving lens trips, I've taken something like 60,000 photos. I've probably gone through maybe 5% of them. Like, I how no much does your gear, the gear you travel with, how much does it weigh? What, do you, how much, what are we talking about? Every time you get a trip, uh, what are we, are we this, talking about? This isn't very heavy, really. Uh, it's really not Feel free heavy. to pull it out whenever. <laughs> no, it's a, I carry a lot of gear, and it is really heavy. But, um, do you, yeah, that, I just, what you just took, how many pictures do you actually take with that thing? Well, actually, this uh, this isn't mine. This is Chris McCaskill, the uh, founder of Smug Mug. He's, He's never taken a picture one. with it? Well, l last night at this soccer game, I took a ton. But, um, yeah, I plan on using it a lot more. And was the, the soccer ball the entire picture? or? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. It's, a two, it's a 200 to 400 with a 1.4 converter. So, you know, I mean, I was, on, I was behind the goal, next to the goal. And I can put mm -hmm. it on 1.4, and I'm literally in the face of the other goalie on the other side of the field. It's amazing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a very hard lens to shoot. So you're basically saying booger pictures. You can take booger pictures. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, but, uh, but, yeah, Google+, Plus, Facebook, no, I, I really – I just don't have enough photos to post to be picky about where I'm posting what. You know, I just don't have that many photos. And I, I have them all sitting at home on hard drives, unedited, but – Stuff that I have like ready to post, I really don't have that much, so I can't be picky. So I just post whatever I got, really. Cool. No so rhyme or reason. All these people are asking questions. There's a camera. A question about film, and there's a question about uh, 3D and what Avatar. Wow, Steven Sausado, thanks for watching. He's asking a lot of stuff. Tim Clary too is asking a ton of stuff. Um, I really appreciate this. I mean, we can go on a little bit longer. I know Lotus has a kid. I don't know kid I'm good for it. a little bit longer. A little bit longer? That's what I that's may what have a kid. I just don't you know. You may have a kid, you just don't know oh, about it. So photo, well, photo walks, it should be drink and click and buckle <laughs> your uh, safety belt. Um, I'm getting <laughs> honked. The Q&A things look to be crapping out a bit. Okay, Tim, thanks for sharing. That's what Tim Clary said in the, uh, in the hangout. So what about themes? There's so many different themes on the internet. There, I know Lotus Fall, the Selfie Sunday... It, does it ever get to be too much, or are there, are there themes that you guys just see and you're like, I gotta go for it, or yeah, Scott? I have, an answer. I, I have one. So I was I was doing the same thing. I, as I said, I love themes. I'll be motivated by them, and it helps me know what to post on any given day. But I was really frustrated because it seemed like people invent themes that come in, they come out. And I can't remember who they are or who tag them. So I made a website. Um, it's gplusthemes.com. And you basically just pick your day of the week, and it shows you all the themes. You click on a line, you hit copy, and you paste it right into your post, and it goes ahead and it tags everybody. If they have a group, it tags the group. It does all the notification for you and all that. So it's super simple. It's free. There's no sign-up or anything. Just use it. And I put it be because I wanted something for myself because I was annoyed with trying to remember what the themes are. And I'm hoping people, I mean, we have maybe 5,500 pluses on it. But um, I really want people to post the themes that I'm missing. And then I want to add things like, I have a picture of a bird. What are some good options for days to post this? Uh, so that's kind of the next area I want to take it to. But again, that's it's if people cool. use it. Dude, this is sweet. I've never seen this before. It's just, it's just brutally simplistic, which is what I was going for. And you know, if, that, you ever, if you ever have where time. Did you link to it? Where did you yeah, it's in the chat. gplusthemes.com if you're watching. Scott plus. Dettweiler. Oh, There's he did The word plus. The word plus, okay, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, I got you. Man, this is so sweet. It's pretty cool. And it's so, so simple. So you just copy and paste it, and it'll change the plus number into the person's name and do the notification, or G plus will do the notification because you type the name in. Um, so rather than having the names, because I don't know if you notice when you copy and paste text into a G plus post, it will strip all the notification capability out. Well, if you do it with the plus number, it works. So. So what, do you guys have a favorite? So is it fair to say, Lotus, that Selfie Sunday is your favorite, or just the one people know you by? Um, I would say that Selfie Sunday is the one that I I do every time it happens. It's Religious. a it's every two every other every other Sunday theme. But all the other ones, I mean, there's plenty that I've never even heard of because there's so many of them now. Like just scrolling through this list that Scott has, I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that half of these existed. Yeah, there's so um, many. And then there are several that I know about, and I, and I don't keep up with them every single time, but I'll jump in here or there. 
I like doing my own thing, too. So I don't want to, like, just post something because there's a theme for it. I want to post what I want to post. <laughs> so I don't stay up You're with... You're your own woman. The only one that I do every time, if I possibly can, is Selfie Sunday. And it's housed within... I mean, it's, it was created by um, Jeff Smith and Leah, Levi Moore. And um, Jeff brought it into the Art of Self-Portraiture community when we started that. So it's housed in there, and we do that every other week. And so I participate in it every time. It's so really Lotus, fun. But uh, I often do Macro Monday, and I do Juan Gonzalez's We Are Parents. Listening to you to talk, I mean, do you, I feel, I mean, we all have a lot going on, but I feel like you just know so many, not just people, but communities and themes and who does what and where to post. And Like, is it, does it seem like an awful lot of information in your head or just, you're, it's, you just know it? It's just like, you can just rapid fire. I like, think there's plenty that I'm not aware of. I think well, just, sure. I have my own stuff that I stay really aware of. Um, and I think it is a lot of stuff, but I think that I'm, the kind of person that's not happy if I don't have tons right. of stuff to yeah. do. Um, I need to feel productive and involved. <laughs> so. I, I feel really busy at the same time. I feel like if I cut any of it out, I would just look for something else to keep me busy. Lotus, you have another theme. Don't you have one for Tuesday? Me, personally? Yeah. No, well, you, you love a Tuesday theme. I just can't remember which one. What's the is it is it a dirty uh, theme? Is that why you can't remember? <laughs> What's the Tuesday thing? That what theme starts that with a the Tuesday theme? theme? Which one? What is, is it? it? It's not twins, is it? Twins Tuesday. Yes, it is. <laughs> that was a joke that I did over the summer, but I only you know what I only did it on Facebook. I didn't that do was it a on joke? Google Plus. That was a, yeah, well, that was that awesome. was like your biggest hit. Twins at the Pool Tuesday. Oh, thanks a lot. Matthew. No, I'm kidding. But I'm saying people like the twins. All you are really known for is taking pictures of your boobies on Facebook. You can no, stop. that's not all you're really known for. That was an anymore. extra bonus for people following you. That's all. Yes. Well, let me that's ask you this. And though. I you got knew, recorded you for it. When I you got did, recorded. Oh, yeah, I saw that. So, But you knew when you did it that there would be, obviously, every all different angles. People that were like, yes, thank God. And people that were like, why are you doing that? And people yeah, that are, and, you know, I do, and I do that kind of stuff because I think it's funny. It's it's just my sense of humor. And so I I don't know. I, mean, I guess there's always people that are going to have a reason to hate you. And it doesn't matter what you do. You can do that kind of stuff. Or you can do completely innocent things. And Do you think people just don't extend it? Do people think of you that don't know you as totally sweet and innocent, and then they see your boobs and they're like, "Whoa!" Like, is that? What I don't it was, think or? anybody who's met me ever thought of me. Well, oh, people that haven't met you, because there's more, more, there are more people out there that haven't met you than have, as far as your following goes, right? Why would anybody even think about me if they haven't met me? Well, Lotus. Uh, well, okay. What, I don't know what you mean. Think, think about like if they follow you in your work. Oh, and they think I'm what? Sweet and innocent? No, based on your work, they think that you're. I mean, did. They don't necessarily think that you're good. I don't know. I don't know what you're asking. Me. Well, they put you. So I think, like, when you first, I think when people think of photography, like the nudity thing doesn't, like we talked about earlier, doesn't necessarily come into play. And I don't think people are used to seeing uh, those kind of pictures from, you know, that That's are. Funny. Photog- the funny thing is that you've brought up nudity several times, and I don't really post nude. But you don't. You're not nude. It's just suggested. Yeah. I like. To, I can't wait to see how Matthew digs himself out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to dig. It's my, I could be under the, in the I hole. I don't know. You know what? Though I think that I don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about what people think about me. I think I spend more time just creating the art that I want to create and sharing it and kind of sharing my sense of humor. But you're very. And, but you did say you curate specifically. Like you're like Google Plus. I post this. Like, so you do kind of, in a sense. I know, I share photography mostly is what I was saying and not, like, other things. Um, and that, to me, that's more of a content thing. It's not like a I'm afraid of what you're going to think of me kind of thing. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so. Okay, and and for the record, Michael Bonacore hinted at Twins Tuesday. I just knew what he was thinking. <laughs> I really Michael, didn't know what you were talking about. Me and Michael um, have similar brains, that's all. Yeah. No, we don't. Best day, of the, best day of the week. Best day of the week. Uh, the pool's <laughs> closed now. Sorry, guys. The pool, the pool is closed. That was not a metaphor. Yes, it was. Um, Twins Tuesday is only a summer theme. That's <laughs> what she's saying. So what are some of the other themes that are like, like okay, Tuesday, Tree Tuesday, and, and Wet Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, Ginger Thursday, Idle Friday. Ginger Thursday. Cat- what? 
Ginger Thursday? Come You've on. never heard of Ginger Thursday? Heard of Ginger no. Thursday? That's like the biggest Google Plus. You like that one, Michael. I gotta go find yeah. that. I'm going to look right now. Uh-oh. It's gonna be gone from the show. I so, like Portrait uh, Tuesday. Portrait Tuesday? Yeah. I wish Mark Rodriguez was here because Mark also does a lot of things. He does movie mashup Tuesday. He makes he mm -hmm. does these amazing uh, he takes people's faces and pictures and puts them in movies, which is really cool. Uh, he does G Plus profiling project where people were it's been in a while where people take like like Thomas Hawk's red picture and then they try to imitate the profile picture. And so they'll put yeah, the, the, those next are to each cool. other. Yeah, I haven't seen those in a while. Those are fun. Trying to I also like, like uh, the the texture one photography days are good too, but that's an everyday one. I like that theme. There's a bathroom like selfie theme. Well, yeah, back to the bathroom selfie. So when we when Lotus was in New York, she was in the bathroom for a long time and a long time, and we were like, oh, I guess they're taking pictures. It was me and Vivian, and we and then they were like, um, what happened? And so Deshawn came down to find out if we had just left or if we were still in the bathroom, <laughs> and we were down there and we had just met this random guy named Sean, who, he went to the bathroom and he came out and he was like, what are you guys doing? And we're like, oh, we were just taking bathroom selfies, and he was like, wow, what is that? And so we uh -huh. explained it to him, and he's like, would you come in the bathroom with me and do a bathroom selfie with me? And right around that time, Deshaun had come down to see where we were, and so we're like, let's, go, let's all go do a bathroom selfie with this stranger we just met. It'll be awesome. So that was fun. Yeah, why not? I'm not going to say that while I was in a bar over the summer, Michael Bonacore might have gone to the bathroom with a few photographers. Is that a thing, photographers? Did I make that up? Or that? Yeah, you did. Sweet. Do you like it? No, not so it's much. It's great. I'm going to have a shirt made. If you have a shirt made, I'll name my kid after you. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do that. Let's not go that far. <laughs> I'm far away from having a kid, so you don't have to worry about it. There's actually a restraining order. <laughs> Is there a restraining order? Uh oh, <laughs> what is Michael Bonacore sharing? Oh, there it is. There's one I meant. Here's me and Rachel. Rachel. So what you that can't is... see is the bottom half. Oh yes, I love this one. That's from New York, as well, and we were with Deshaun that night. Uh, but I, this is great. Rachel Tyne is an awesome photographer. Does amazing yes. work. A lot of awesome self-portrait type stuff. And this was the first time I met her uh, this weekend in New York back in July. And look at my hair. So uh, Kelly Seeger Kim had stolen my hat <laughs> and, and left and went home, and she still has it to this day. Who's another so, photographer? Kim's like that. you got to watch her. I know. you got to watch her. She's, she's a klepto. She's, she's a wily. Klepto. So, uh, so, she, uh, so she left with my hat. My hair was long. It was scraggly. It was summer. It was like 100 degrees with 100% humidity. And we had done the photo walk all day that day. And we right? had just done the photo walk all day. So I'm sweating my ass off. And we're drunk. It's like 3 a.m. in a bar. And I go to Rachel. I look at Rachel, and she's like, oh, I'm about to leave. And I go, follow me to the bathroom. And she, <laughs> goes, like her. she goes, what? And I go, follow me. And this is like a grungy dive bar. Like, this is not even like, you know, nowhere near nice. And so sure enough, she's like giving me this weird look, and she's creeped out. And I'm like, no, come <laughs> with me, Rachel, to the to the women's room, and she's like, Ugh. and she like slowly walked down, and then we got down there, and I just whipped out the camera, and I was like, she and then just whipped out the camera. Yeah, that's what I call it, whipping. And out to the be camera. fair, so we were at some other bar, like we were at a couple bars, and they were, I think one bar made us leave, or we were done, and then they were searching out a last bar at like three or four in the morning. I think bars go till four in the morning here, so that was our last stop. We were was, at, we ended Matthew at a. Uh, we ended at an Irish bar with a Chinese buffet. It's true. It's called I like anybody, old, I don't it's think called anybody like had a Chinese buffet. Oh, oh, flat old mullets. Yeah, it's called like a Flannery's or something, and it's got a Chinese buffet. So you know it's good. <laughs> it's pretty good. And also, Michael at the end of the night likes everyone to do double Bonacol, Bonacar by uh, by the others. Oh, the bad selfie. Oh, yeah. With Vivian. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. That's from when uh, we were in the bathroom when you were wondering if we were dead, Matthew. I was thinking maybe someone who killed you guys because they were we we I figured they take some pictures but they were down there for quite some time and then we found we were at the park and then we, you guys found, you found that awesome room yeah uh, oh we had so much fun that night my phone my camera was dead so I could not take any more pictures I was that's why I should get a real camera that's one reason that's a good yeah well batteries can die on those too 
bring extra batteries. So what about actual cameras? What do you guys each have a favorite? I mean, is there one that you just that you sleep with that you kiss that you just it's like I love that? I love my camera because it's the one I have, man. I think I could make images with anything, but I, I don't get into the big debate and the big arguments and the rivalries and the loyalties. I'm just not. Do you down think it's do you guys do you guys think it's silly, man? Like it, it's a little like I look at it like a Facebook, Google Plus, or like an Android iPhone when people talk about you know the Canon or the or whatever else the other brand. Well, no, because I think Google Plus and Facebook have different target audiences and they do different things. Where a Canon or a Nikon or a, a Sigma or Fuji or any of those, they do the same things. They take pictures. Now, I, I'm I'm a Nikon shooter. I've got a Nikon D800, which is a 40 megapixel, damn near 40 megapixel camera, and I need that megapixel. So that, that's what I want. So that's the reason why I have that camera. But I, when I taught, a, I taught a lighting workshop this weekend, and people had Canon cameras. I could pick it up, and I'd take a great picture with that too. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a camera. So it's, it's not like the iPhone Android argument because I, I love my Droid, but um, you know, I, I, it, an iPhone is a completely different creature. It acts differently. It doesn't do. I mean, it right. has to phone, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's the same thing. But it has a lot of different features to it. Um, I'm actually. Uh, I really want uh, a medium format camera, but for what I do, that's like awesome, and that's yeah, huge amounts of money. So the the phase one rep is actually coming in town next Friday to show me something. I'm like, oh. so would you say would you say like if you're make, if you're shooting video, then the, that's where the real difference is, or it's the same kind of? Can you compare shooting a movie to shooting photographs? It's it they're, they're the, the, the same. Well, I don't shoot video, but I mean. I, a still frame camera is a still frame camera. <laughs> what is the space? It's like that when I asked her. Asked I don't question. think you can. It's it's a different thing, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's a different thing. But I'm so I'm saying that's what I'm saying. So like film versus digital with video and getting a certain effect, a certain style, a certain feel. But you can. Aren't there cameras out there that are like, all right, I'm shooting vintage today. I want this all to be very vintage. So uh, we don't specific well, camera say, I, for that. I don't. I don't use that. I mean, my camera always takes a normal picture and then. Later on, I may choose to make it vintage, but I'm not going to shoot it that way because if I change my mind later, you can't. You can't, right. You can't. So, you know, like a lot of people will shoot like Lomo lenses or some of these older cameras. That's cool and it's neat and everything, but if I took an awesome picture, I'm like, if only that were not <laughs> yeah. like that goofy lens. Like black and white film, is that just a waste to do that, to shoot on black and white film? No, that, that that's that has its own. That's kind of like listening to music on a on a, a, a platter, you know, listening to it on a forty-five or a thirty-three. Uh, it's got a different. Unless you're going for a certain effect, maybe I don't. Know. Yeah, it's got a different feel. But you know, modern cameras, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sigma, all those, they're they're basically they do the same things. There's arguments as to usability, and I have my camera for. You know reasons of how I like I love how Nikon works. I like the Nikon glass, but at the end of the day, again, I can pick up a Canon and still take a picture with it. You know, I may be befuddled as to how to change some settings. Yeah. But you know, after a couple of minutes, you figure it out, and it's an f-stop, an f-stop, and an ISO is an ISO. But yeah, it's, it's the camera you have is the is the best camera. You know, I, I have an older. Nikon I carry in the trunk of my car just in case you know I see something and I want to get out and take a picture of it and I don't have my big rig with me. Um, you know it's worth a couple hundred dollars, but it still takes a you know a good 12 megapixel picture, good enough for an eight by ten. Yeah, I've shot with my point and shoot recently, and I and my old uh, Canon G9 PowerShot G9, and it's funny because I'll post photos from that and I they get as as good a response as anything I take mm -hmm. with my. DSLR, so I mean, you know. When I was doing stock photography, when I first started doing photography, I had dollar signs in my eyes, and I, I hated doing stock. Um, but the most, the best selling picture I ever took was with my little, my wife's little Canon Elf pocket camera. Nice. I mean, it's like 450 times, you know. So, That's yeah. nice. That's nice. Yeah. What about you, yeah, Bonacore? So. Do you? I mean, you, you, are you. That's just your. That's just your pose. That's like your. It's like your wrestling pose if you were a wrestler, right? That's more like what it is, your style. I mean, you all have your own styles, too, as photographers, you know? To a point, you vari you're, there's variety. Scott is doing prop, and Michael Landscape, and like Lisa Lotus, you do a pretty big variety. Everyone does a variety, but, I mean, do you, 
I mean, is it weird when people know you as something, or you like, is that like something? Oh, you're the bon you're the you're the double bonnacle guy, or you're the selfie bad selfie, or you're the you're the person with the female models and on the motorcycles, or I mean, I don't know what they say to you, but does it is it weird? Like people have said that to me, you're the hangout guy. Well, you know, people say weird all kinds of things. You're like, oh, okay, maybe I get it. You get it. Is it weird when people say that stuff to you, or? I don't think it's weird. I think it's a little bit surreal when people think of you as anything in particular, too, because it's like they've paid attention and then remembered who you are later. I think it's flattering that that clearly they've been paying attention to what you've done over time and they have a thing that they associate with you, right? So I think maybe that feels a little weird in a way, like you're saying. That's kind of weird, maybe. I think it's surreal. Or just to, just to hear what they actually. I mean, if you're if you're if you're taking what their idea of yourself, what you're thinking, what your idea of perception. I mean, obviously, if you're taking pictures of yourself in the bathroom all the time. I, people, <laughs> well, clearly, I mean, if you've taken 500 bathroom selfies, it's not that weird if you're the bathroom selfie girl. Right, and I'm not one to talk. Not that I'm a photographer, but I or whatever a photographer. I take thousands of pictures and I post a lot of them. But and and for those of you that don't know, Lotus is married to a musician who's going to play us a song now. He's not even here. He left. Oh, is he? Oh, he left to go. He'll be back oh, later. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were. I thought you were going to introduce your. Your. What kind of music does your husband play? Do you want to? Um, for a living, his his major like thing that he does most of the time is country music. Um, but he can do just about anything. He can play really great rock guitar, and he can play uh, jazz and blues. He's an incredibly talented musician. He's one of those people who's definitely doing for a living what he was meant to do. He's he's this lucky guy who had a talent who, even without practicing, it's kind of just there kind of thing, you know? And he's lucky that he's able to make money doing what his thing is. Yeah, his so. And I would also like to point out, Lotus has a hell of a voice herself. Why, thank you, Mike. Beautiful voice. Her and, see, and her then we husband. need to hear more of that. See, that's something I wasn't well, aware of. I'm going to tell you where to find it. Well, kind of. I'm going to suggest it, and then Lotus can tell you. So, where Lotus, to find have it. you? Did you post the your the song he's talking about on your Google Plus or Facebook or no? I think that I've linked to it before, but I did it. I think I posted it on my blog years ago. A friend of mine does this holiday concert thing every year. He's a blogger, and so he gets all of his friends to sing holiday songs and and. Um, it's just kind of a fun thing, and so John and I did that um, two or three years ago, and we sang, we covered Baby It's Cold Outside, which was a lot of fun for us to do, and since we've done that, we've talked about doing other covers. In fact, this year, we're going to do it again, and we're going to do Winter Wonderland, and we're going to get Brayden to join us. He's old enough to join in on it this year, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, sounds like a lot of fun, and I, yeah. so, so you like Christmas and Christmas time? Who doesn't? I like it okay. My people don't let me celebrate it. Um, oh, come on. You like presents. Sh shut up. Gifts. Uh, what about, so what about, so music plays a big part of photography, you guys, right? Do you guys, is, when you're shooting or when you're editing, do you, is there music that inspires you or that you must listen to when you're doing either one or not really? Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. You're like the guy in the back of the concert. Pink Floyd! Freebird! 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 <laughs> Stairway! Denied! Watchtower! Um, yeah. I listen to music a lot when I'm processing photos. Like does it affect the way you process? or? Oh, it totally does. Music affects my mood entirely, definitely. And my mood affects the way I process something, what I'm thinking about. It to yeah, it affects, it affects the work, I think. But then also, I, I, I will choose the music that also matches the mood I'm in, so it's kind of a two-way. And yeah. Michael does the Pink Floyd, and Scott, what about you? Do you, I mean, sometimes you put music on when you're shooting in the studio? Mm -hmm. All the time, yeah, so we, most of the time when I'm shooting or when I'm, when I'm doing my post-processing, I'm an electronica trance type guy, so um, Dead Mouse and, and everything, you know, anything that's basically making the bass roar, and I've got headphones that I wear, and my wife gets familiar with me because she can hear the, the bass. Um, but yeah, in the studio, same thing. We put on uh, trance and and just you know turn up the the volume and let it go. And and I think that that energy helps the shoots a lot. And then when I'm doing post processing, sometimes it's that, or it's the extreme opposite. I'll I'll put classical on. And uh, so anything between electronic and classical, I tend to not like words. 
uh, when I'm doing my post processing. I don't want to focus on the song. I don't want to sing along to the song. I just want music. So um, I tend to like that. Words, words are bad. I like that when I'm writing. I'm sorry, Scott. What did you say? Because just when I'm processing, I don't like the words. But you know, if I'm like we went to my daughter and I went to go see Silver Sun pickups this year. Um, so we have Milwaukee has one of the largest music festivals. It is actually the largest music festival in the world. They've got like twenty some odd stages, and it goes for eleven days. So you go in, and you can walk out seeing you know forty different acts that day, um, and it runs for eleven days. So we went to see like Silver Sun pickups and some of the other groups that that I like. Um, I like alternative rock, so I've gotten her into some of that. And, um, but yeah, so I, I like. Music with words when I'm not doing <laughs> this stuff. You're like I like irregular music when I'm not photography. When I'm not when I'm not focused on yeah this. So the words you find the words are distracting for you, huh? I think so. Yeah. That's, I find I'm distracted by them when I'm writing, but not so much when I'm processing. So that's an interesting that's an interesting thing to hear. Interesting. Well, the Bonacro, you've got Pink Floyd. So Pink Floyd, you got the uh, Dark Side of the Moon on. You have plenty of time without words going on. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, it, more than Pink Floyd. I'm just a classic rock guy in general, but <clears throat> I usually do a lot of my processing late at night. I'm here at Smug Mug working all day, and, and I actually sleep on this couch behind me every so often because that explains a lot. Away. Yeah, <laughs> but when I'm home and I'm editing photos, it's usually late at night, so I'm not, you know, really in the mood. I like, you know, a lot of harder rock too, but I'm not really in the mood for, you know, something hard. And quiet that's what she said. Uh, and that's what she said. I was thinking that, but I was hoping Lotus would. Yeah. I was still devoid for me to. I'm always good for it. Yeah, that's so I'll throw on said. some some good good soft Floyd and and get get cranking. Cool. Well, we still have. A, believe it or not, there's still a lot of people watching us. They look. I, what? I, yes. Who the hell okay. would be watching this? There's at least 11 people watching, which is. More than five. Hey, I'm gonna go open so, the questions. So my mother, my brother, four cousins. <laughs> you have that big a family? Yeah. San Francisco. So what's it like? So talk about your individual cities. Like what? What's the photography culture like? And the drink and click culture like? And the what? I mean. There's a really you, vibrant photography community here in Austin. I was actually thrilled to start kind of finding out about that once I was in touch with more of them over social media. Um, not just, I mean, Drink and Click is, has been really great, and we have a really excellent group of regulars in that, but there are also other camera and photography clubs around um, town. There's one on campus. There's a lot of students here, so there's, it's a campus town as well. Um, and uh, it's... There's no lack of photographers to get together with in town. It's really nice. I think there's a lot of really great stuff to shoot around here. So, but yeah, the photography community in town is really nice. It's vibrant. What are you gonna say, Scott? Oh, Milwaukee's great. It's the big city that feels like a little city. You know, we've got a really vibrant photography community around here as well. They do a lot of get-togethers and photo walks and things like that. Um, I'm not that close to downtown. I'm probably about a 40, 45 minute drive away. Uh, I live in a very northwest suburb, um, and we do uh, we do some some local stuff here. Like we have uh, we have two basilicas in Wisconsin. I think we're the only state that has two basilicas, and uh, it's it's huge and it's in the middle of nowhere, way out in the country, way up on a really tall hill. Um, so oftentimes there's a lot of photo walks that go out there, especially in the fall right now, and the color is beautiful, and it's just yeah. giant steeples out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so that's kind of a destination. It's called Holy Hill. Um, it's, you know, there's um, a couple of things, but when all the leaves are off the trees in the wintertime, I can see the spires in the house, and so it's close enough, but yet, you know. Um, well, we're spoiled with fall enough. foliage here in New York, upstate New York and the northeast, Boston and Connecticut. They, they fall foliage is amazing. So, on the side, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Do you, I mean, the different, the, the, do you have a, well, Matt buttoned up his shirt? Okay, I, that's, I just noticed that. No, I that's a request for you to button like, up. what? What am I showing here? Maybe your um, t-shirt is too close to flesh color and they think you're. They think I'm naked? There, there's hair. I mean, I'm not I was going to say, you would be much hairier, wouldn't it? I guess. Everyone's different, unless I'm Everyone's maybe. different. Come on. Everyone's man. different. Some people manscape. Some people have, no, can't do a bonacore kind of chest hair thing. 
Instead uh, of asking you to button up your shirt, why don't why doesn't somebody ask the other guys to unbutton their shirts? Well, <laughs> notice is like I'm showing cleavage and you guys are not. <laughs> I'm not showing any cleavage. More than we are. Uh, thank you for that, Aaron Wood, for for that wonderful for bringing that one up. For thank bringing you. it up. For bringing I lost my yeah, channel. Oh, we're in Milwaukee. You mentioned fall foliage, and that has to be the only thing that I miss since I've been living in Austin. I've lived, I grew up in North Carolina, and then I lived in Nashville for a while. And I love Austin, but that's the one thing I miss is having an actual fall season where there's like a little bit of cool air and there's beautiful leaves that are changing colors. We don't really get much of that here, and it's something I always really enjoyed growing up is seeing that. My brother and I, as children, even had this really silly ritual called leaf dance where we'd go out in the yard and the leaves would fall and we would chase them. So there's like a really good childhood memory and we don't get to do like raking up piles of leaves and stuff here. So I really miss that. I want to go, I really want to go to Asheville around this time of year and shoot, you know, in that area. So that's North Carolina, right? Or yeah, right? and beautiful, beautiful. You, you've got mountains and waterfalls and beautiful fall foliage there. So that would be a really, if I could travel right now, that's where I would go. I have, a, I have a model who contacted me a couple days ago. She made a dress out of leaves, and she wants to shoot it outside while it's still, you know, leaves are still on the tree. But uh, we have to shoot that really early in the morning, you know, sunrise or sunset one of the two, and then I have to light it. So we got to take, you know, lights out in the middle of a field or something and find a, a state park or, you know, so I'm kind of excited to do that. Uh, that's out of your studio. Out. Hmm? You're gonna be out of the studio. I know. I, it, it's been twice in you a month. You have to wear now. a jacket. I'm getting outside uh, the, of the studio. So I'm in Green Bay, and, and now this. It's a new week. <laughs> well, I actually want to shoot outside more, but um, I mean, I have a great studio, and I paid for it. So, <laughs> so well, that's it. You're paying. You pay. Right. You pay. If you're like, I paid for the studio. I'm gonna use it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So we do. Um, it's, we have a cooperative studio, so what we do is I have seven partners, and we all share share time at the studio. Oh, that's so, neat. We, we do workshops, like I'll do big lighting workshops and posing workshops, and then random photographers in the area are you know, from Chicago, or, or we have something in Indiana, Indiana and Iowa came in this time. And we get together, and they will do a lighting workshop and go through you know lighting and posing, and, and uh, that's kind of fun, because you get to interact with a, a different group of people every time. I just realized that, that everybody, not except for me, everyone has a couch in their in their shop. Everyone, three couches. I don't have a couch. I'm jealous. New couch. This is an old couch. living room couch that that their couch. Done. Well, Michael's got the bed. Mine's a futon, to be fair. Well, it's close enough. <laughs> you can do you can do the same thing on the futon that you can do on the couch, which is. Sick. I have an awesome chair too, so. That's where my lens sleeps at night. With the jungle, with the lion sleeps. Oh, she's gonna go. Okay, let's go full speed. Lotus. Taking a picture. She's got. Looks like a camera back there. Oh, modeling the. The model of the living room. Are you gonna stand on your head too, or what? Can I stand on my head? You don't have to, but it, but I don't know. You were you were doing. Yeah, that costs stuff. extra. You're gonna, we're gonna have to discuss that in a contract <laughs> for a future show. I'm sponsored by Google Plus once. What is that? Uh, You're going to have to sponsor me with health insurance if you want me to do some crap health like that. Health insurance? What? Everyone gets health insurance now. Okay. <laughs> when they open up the government, we will all have the health insurance. Okay, I'm not, we're, I will not even, we can't no, start that. We won't get into it. No, nope. I wasn't going there. <laughs> we were having lots of fun, and uh, PJ said cheers, and Johannes, if that Johan, is that what I'm saying it right? Great guest in the house. I was saying their name Steven, wrong. who wants, oh, Aaron wants to know what's under my couch. Yeah, what is under your couch? Okay, hold on. I'll show you what's under my couch. Oh, uh, I've been waiting for this. Do -do ah! She's going to pull out some fingers. <laughs> I was right. Oh, a the horse head. Yeah. <laughs> oh. need a picture of that one. It's my prop box. I have a whole bunch of props and all kinds of wacky stuff in there. Oh, you were too late. I took one, didn't I? So yeah, this is my. I haven't haven't actually I haven't shot with this yet, but this is my unicorn mask. Nice. 
so we used to have a uh, an iron editor thing on G Plus with Scott Jarvie, and every week we'd get together, and he had one hour to edit seven photos. And at oh, the end I remember of that, that. Yeah, and that was great. We used to do it all the time, and um, then we had you know, so I love those classes. And then we had some with uh, Daniel Banias. We did uh, like a painting one on one or digital painting and things like this. And we had a we had a contest. I forget what the contest was, but it, and it was with I believe it was the painting one. Um, where you would win a horse head from Amazon <laughs> if you want. I, you know, that would be a really kind of cool thing to do for uh, maybe some of these, uh, like the surreal portrait one or some sort of Just have to be careful of the giveaways. But Well, so no, you, you, so you win the horse head, but the next one's got to mail it to whoever won the next one. Yes. So pay it forward. Or Actually, yeah. I, I can't remember. I think it might have been Alexis Corum that I said I had shown it to her, and she was like, oh, you got to send that to me. And then we were, we were actually... Kind of joking about something like that, like the, the traveling unicorn. Aaron Wood said stuff of nightmares. Sorry, Aaron Wood. Ricardo Aaron. Williams has a cool project, the the traveling shirt, where they've been doing that. They've been doing self portraits with the shirt and passing it on to the next person. So that's kind of cool. Those are fun. That is cool. I didn't even know that kind. Of, I knew that existed with artwork, but I didn't know it existed with photography props. Oh, yeah, totally. That's, that's really cool. What, Michael? Do you have any props getting mailed to you lately, or <laughs> anything that you, you can know? talk about on air? Yeah. You can yeah. talk. Any any girl sending you any? Uh, no. Do you have my, Michael? Do you, a lot of girls out there dig you. Would you have a big girl fan base? Are you? Well, do a lot of girls dig me? I. Who gave you this information? I don't know. I have saw it with my own eyes. You sent your watch photo to. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably about seven. Yeah. That's seven. That's, seven. that's a large fan base. It's still, the number of people that's watching the show, by the way. No. Oh, perfect. Those, <laughs> I got all seven They're all here. Actually, there's a bonus, too. Uh, Tim Barber's watching from Durham. Hey, Tim Barber. North Sweet. Carolina. Oh, and he asked where... Oh, I grew up in eastern North Carolina near Greenville, and then I went to graduate school in Winston-Salem. You're like, and I bet I... You're, like, regretting that. I'm just <laughs> I regretted what? Getting my graduate degree? No, I'm just kidding. Just because it costs money. Yeah, no, I do regret the student loans I took out for that. Yeah. <laughs> student loans! Yeah. Another stuff. topic we will not get into. No, well, Lotus be itself. I saw Aaron Wood is digging is the couch. The South, you think I'm a fan of Aaron Wood. Oh, my God. You know, I, be South by Southwest. I got to, it was really fun this past year at South by Southwest. I got to shoot South by Southwest for Flickr. That was really great. Um, will I be there next year? Probably, yeah. So how did that, did they just contact you and be like, we like your stuff, shoot, shoot, stuff, stuff? Yeah, would you like to do this? And I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Did you meet, so did you meet a lot of people from Google Plus, South by Southwest? Mm, you know, I saw, I hung out with more people from Google Plus at South by Southwest, not this year, but the year before. They did a big thing, big and they had like a whole street with different houses that were just Google Plus houses, and they did a really big thing that year. But I didn't see as many people from Google Plus here uh, this year. This at this South Bay Southwest, the recent one, but it's it's in town. So I mean, I believe yeah. Somebody I was talking to somebody from Austin today. They were saying that Austin originally was not meant to be like accommodate so many freaking people, and now there's like tons of size skyscrapers and condominiums. Is it is it growing at such a fast rate? Is South by Southwest Austin city limits? Is it impossible to uh, maneuver your way? Oh yeah, it totally makes everything crazy for a while, and I think there are definitely the haters who just hate the time during which South by Southwest is going on because it makes you know all kinds of traffic snafus and stuff like that. But you know, whatever, it makes things fun. It makes things different. I like things like that. Not like Michael, who is petrified to walk out of his apartment into the alley <laughs> with a sourdough bread that he has to pass by and not eat every day. Is that a fact? I don't know. What is? Tell us about. Tell us something about San Francisco. We don't know. Like everyone's like, yeah, San Francisco has got the bridges and the hills and the tech is like south. And what? What don't we know about San Francisco? We need a San Francisco pro tip. Yeah, we need something. City uh, expert. Don't lock your car in a garage. Yeah, uh, <laughs> actually, that is a good tip. Don't lock your car. <laughs> I'm serious. It just keep. Don't keep anything valuable in there. And don't lock it. That way, you give them the opportunity to go through your stuff, find that you don't have anything worth stealing, and then you save yourself two hundred dollars on replacing a window. Is that the window that I smashed my head into? 
Yes. The same one. I, okay, so I probably weakened it. I had a yeah. yeah. Tell us why yeah, you did that again. Was it subtle stubbornness or? I th we we were dri were we driving down Lombard Street when I did that, and I was like, yeah, and I wanted to put my head out the window. <laughs> yes. And I was and I thought yeah. it was open, and I like was going for it with gusto. And I just smacked my head into the window really hard. And yeah, and San Francisco you, is like a windy city. And you this not, mayor. And you were like, oh my god, did you break it? Did you break the window or, or your head? head? What was he more concerned about it? Oh, the window, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> this may or may not have been after a drink and quick. So I, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> she doesn't do the uh, <laughs> stuff. I'm just that clumsy, completely sober, too, though. And did so. you guys, so what was it, you did these huge San Francisco photo walks, did you guys visit the Mountain View campus? Was that something you had the pleasure of doing, or? Uh, yeah, me and Lotus have both been down to Google, Mountain View. I oh, haven't been to the Mountain View office. My trip, oh, remember my March trip, I had a, I had planned to go to Mountain View, and I had to cancel it. And that we, did go to, uh, we did go to San Francisco, though. We got photo booth pictures. We yeah, we went to the San Francisco. Yeah, the San Francisco office. Cool. Did you? Was there a slide that you got to go down or something? Yeah. They give you lunch trays, and we went down on lunch trays. It was. Trays. You went down with your lunch trays? Mm hmm. Yeah. You slide on them. Yeah. After you eat, though? You eat first, no. and then you slide No, down. honey, it's like a sled. Oh, okay. Different tray. No, I got that it was a sled. I was trying to. <laughs> Why don't you just button your shirt up? What? <laughs> if there's anything about snow, we, we do that here. <laughs> Lunch trays, inner tubes. Inner tubes are awesome. Yeah, that's what we do here. Sleds. What, what you do is you get up in the house and you shovel all the all the snow off the roofs before the roof caves in, and they usually go up to the to the roof line, and then you can take the you take the sled all the way to the peak of the roof and then drive it off. Right off the roof. It's awesome. Milwaukee pro tip. Milwaukee with the beer, and what's the best beer to drink in Milwaukee? Uh, well, that's a very good question, uh, <laughs> and and it's not the one you think it's going to be. Uh, there's actually a brewery here called Lakefront uh, that I really like, and another one called Sprecher. Um, that's very good. That sounds very German. Sprecher is very German. Yeah, very German. We're a big, big German Polish population population here. Um, Are you totally too over too over there? I have German lineage. Do, oh, you're. Are you a mutt? I'm I a mutt. My mother is Swiss, and my father is of German descent. Yeah. My yeah. Mate, you, and I, you and I are similar creatures. Us German and. Uh, German and Swiss, and then there's a little Dutch thrown in there, too. Oh, mix it up, baby. Suddenly I want some pudding and a girl in a <laughs> dress. Uh, Why don't we just bring the Ricola dress. ad in here, too? Ricola. <laughs> Michael Bonacore. Uh, so tell, so I guess we could, I, I mean, you guys probably want to sleep and do work or whatever. Or I want to eat yet. Yeah, I haven't eaten dinner. You haven't yet. eaten? I no. Neither have I. My wife brought me chicken. It's upstairs. She's like, it's on the table. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, way to go, it. Matt. It's wow. my fault. Well, you guys all have to take a picture of it and post Get it. Get control say, of your show, you. man. No, you guys, you guys all have oh. to take a picture of it. And, oh, you got to do it. Actually, you know what? I'll bring, I'll, I will talk about something, though, um, that's related to our previous conversations about differences between what you post. So my wife... Um, used to make me lunch every day, and she'd bring the lunch down to my office here, and it would be like an amazing thing, and I'd take a picture of it, and I'd post it on Facebook, and it was always a crappy cell phone picture by rule. She goes, you can't light it. you got to put it in your window if you want to, but you cannot light it. Just take a picture of it. So every day I would post a picture, and so I started calling her Wonder Wife. So everyone's like, oh, you know, Wonder Wife made you lunch or something like that line. And then about uh, January, February, I decided I wanted to get in shape. So I went from a size 40 waist to like a size 28. And it hey, was congratulations. What? How did you do? That's crazy. How long is it getting from 40 to 28? That's um, like... Actually, dropping the weight didn't take me more than, say, a month and a half. Wow. Um, and it was diet, diet, diet. Wait, you're diet. saying you lost 12 waist sizes in a month and a half? Something like that. How is that? Yeah, it was probably about five, five pounds a week did, of Did fat. you stop eating? No, no, actually it's the op exact opposite. If you stop eating, you, then you go on this big roller coaster. Right, right. No, it was, uh, it was actually eating a very specific diet, and it was a lot of chicken, grapefruit, broccoli. I mean, all the stuff you think would be healthy. Basically, it was a clean diet. Did yeah. you stop eating bread? Yeah, oh, I could eat sourdough, but I can only have them every other day. Because, yeah, no sugar of any kind in any form any day. So that means no milk. Anyway, I don't want to get into the diet thing. No, but in so, fact, I'm just saying, like, most people lose a lot of weight, but do you lose 12 waist size, sizes in a month and a half? But I weigh, I weigh more now than I did then. He changed his body composition. Yeah. 
Right. I, I, am, I am much more muscular now. I can do like 14 pull-ups. I mean, I'm like the right, best right. I've been in my life. No, I get people losing like two or three weight sizes, but you lost 12. Okay, that's yeah. good for but you. But my, my goal is to change my body shape. So um, I hired it was a in your. It was already in your in your makeup to do to have that. Yeah. So I, I hired a trainer and I said I want to I want to look like this and he says well as long as you eat what I tell you to eat exactly. Oh, you didn't tell that. You didn't give me. You didn't know you had the, the pro with you. Oh yeah, yeah. No, okay. I, I I'm I'm 45. I'm like I don't want to weigh like this anymore. Oh, I know you're 45. There you go. I don't want to I don't want to continue to be you know big. And I just big. found out I was actually a year older than Bonacar and I was like what? <laughs> it's weird, right? Anyway, so so I was taking pictures and posting them on Facebook, but they never put them on Google Plus. And then when I started this this diet, my wife's like, I am not making lunch anymore because it's too freaking complex. So <laughs> she didn't want to do your picture. special diet. Yeah, but when I go to these shoots, like I'll go to Green Bay and they'll be like, a shoot with two or three hundred models up there, and they'll be like, oh, where's Wonder Wife? You should have brought Wonder Wife. So they all remember her <laughs> lunches. But you're talking about a difference between Facebook and Google Plus. That's the big yeah. one there. It's the little interactive things like that. I'll post on Facebook, but they don't go on Google Plus. Yeah. Mostly because yeah. it's stupid. Because of that, yeah. Bonacar. Yeah, wife's background picture on my phone. How's that? Well, oh, Wonder Wife. That's your wife? Yeah. yeah He's I'll like, show what? You. Wait, wait, that's, your, that's your wife? That's Open like, again? Show, yeah. can be hot? What? She can be, but we don't, you know, picture, she was in a model, she was modeling in that picture, right? Yeah, and she's Wasn't not it just like a picture of, like, her in a regular I clothes? I took her to the studio, and I said, so, so she loved it, because she thought it was like, um... Can you show, hold it up again so we take a picture? Hang it's on, I want to I wanna yeah. find the actual picture here. Let's okay. get a screen share. Sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. No, I'm not saying he can't have a hot wife. I just didn't ever, I, just the picture. <laughs> hey, I can't have no, a hot No, you guys are both like, that's your wife? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever, that's Lotus Carol? Shut up. <laughs> she told me to shut up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to never watch this. I'm going to tell Alan Shapiro to come punch you. Alan Shapiro, so when I met Alan Shapiro, I think it's when I met Lotus, too, and he was always like, so you're that guy. You're that I love guy. Alan so much. <laughs> Alan just makes faces. Awesome. No, he's great. Um, oh, there okay. she is. There's a. There's more revealing. Oh, are you showing me that on our show? Yeah. Brown you're, chicken, brown cow. That's your wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the show. Oh, he took a good photo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your wife. wife. That's really nice, Scott. Scott's like, yes, it is. I haven't that's seen this one. Did you post? You posted this. Yeah, it, it, I every so it. often it makes it, it makes its turns on Google Plus. So this, <laughs> so did you? Um, how was it like directing your wife? You know, uh, so she, she goes. You know, it's, well, first of all, when I whenever I shoot, there's usually a group of people. So there's hair, there's makeup, there's oftentimes a wardrobe person. It's not just me. So it's uh, you have a completely different mindset, as I talked about earlier. When you're when you're in the studio. It's business, and it's basically business. You know, you're it's there business. to do. You're there to uh, make that picture. Here's uh, another one. Nice. Wait for the focus. Yeah, that's the one that's on the phone, right? Yeah, and it's also her avatar and the one that she has all over the place. Yeah. That's really nice. Very and fun nice. to do that. Round of applause. Yeah, to share your. <laughs> Thank you for the clap. You and to have you your spouse Keep yourself in shape. Actually, since we're sharing, I'll show my my. Ah, you guys are in Wisconsin, and there's a lot of cheese and cold, so to be in shape, <laughs> it's really there's a lot of there's a lot of difficulty. Ice cream and cheese. Yeah, cheese is cheese is uh, mandatory. Right. Oh man, I love cheese. We have even, a lot even of what I post. So. I'm a my I'm a huge fan of tacos and margaritas, so this is what tells me I know that I am in I'm home. I'm in the right place for me. <laughs> And you get to have the real thing, not like... It's cheap. good stuff, man. It's good. What plug right now? Plug a uh, Tex-Mex place that you just uh, love. Oh, my my very favorite Tex-Mex place here is Chewy's. Like the Star Wars character? <laughs> yeah, I can. Chewy. <laughs> Chewy's. No, it's really... It's excellent. It's really great. Baja Fresh, Tex-Mex, wonderful margaritas. I am um, a big fan in downtown Austin of um, Wero's Taco Bar, too. It's a very, it's a very good place to eat. I want to come to Austin. I w I'd rather go when it's not South by South Austin City than it's because I feel like yeah, it's not so busy. Yeah, it's crazy busy. It's I've only been to Southwest. Yeah. Uh, March. 
March. It's not always the exact during the exact same week, but I think like maybe around the second week of March. Generally, I don't know exactly what the dates are for next year. Ever since they rejected my film. Oh, boo. Whatever. Well, they reject probably everybody's film. Um, and what about at Bonacar? I got to come out to San Francisco. I, I was there when I was ten. I got to see a Niners playoff game in the rain and the mud. Niners. Niners. I got season tickets. Oh yeah. Do you? Are you allowed to take your camera and shoot? At a game? Uh, you know, I've never tried. That's a that's a strictly drinking day for me. So. Because those would be pretty epic pictures. I don't know where your seats are, but I'm guessing they with your no so zoom no. zoom. You get like tight shots of tight ends and stuff. <laughs> I don't have the room shut out. That was that was my the big thing. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You got Great Lakes. You're not that far. Chicago. You ever go down to Chicago? Yeah, it's about two and a half hours away. Um, every so often, do a workshop down there, or I get a lot of models that come from up there. I yeah, I love I love Chicago, but you know it's um, Milwaukee's got everything else that I need here. You know, um, I don't know. I need to travel more. I went to Iceland once. I loved it. I need to go back. Iceland. Yeah, I did some beautiful. Nice. Okay, we can wrap up with that. Where Where are some of the places that you guys have never been, and that you really want to go to to shoot? I'm gonna go back to Iceland. Iceland. Okay. <laughs> well, it's funny. I mean, what is it about Iceland? Just because? Just well, beautiful. It's, geographically, it's the most diverse. It's one of the most diverse. Well, we volcanoes and glaciers and lava flows. And you name it. It's all right there, and they have the most beautiful women there. So. Okay. Says the guy with the most beautiful wife. Okay. Well, you know, I, I shoot women, so I have an eye for yeah. Oh, somebody oh you meant beautiful here. because to shoot them, not because just, just to... Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm married. I'm happily married. No, I'm not, I'm I not, don't mean it like that. I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, the way you said it. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> what? So, so somebody Carol. posted earlier a question about where do I find models or whatever. Um, I'm actually pretty daring. I'll, I'll I find a pretty girl and hand them a card. So, That's like, good. And uh, just... And, and uh, the response rate's actually pretty good. Um, I think mostly because they can go to my website and check it out and, and whatever. And I'm not a smug mug user. Not yet. Mm. yet. No. Oh. I, mean, I am actually a Zen Folio guy. I was going to say, I bet you a million dollars if he's not smug mug, he's Zen Folio. Is that and, the other and, one? And I have my reasons for doing that is uh, I support a license method for the models to get their pictures that smug mug doesn't support. Oh. So that's the reason. Will, will smug mug? Possibly, well, I guess you can't comment on that, Michael. But or you, do you have any comments on what he just said? Well, I don't even know what he's referring to, but I'll take that. I'll take that up with him offline because we might yeah. be doing it. He just doesn't know. That's true. Yeah, I was a oh, smuggling user well. for a while, and and uh, yeah, some movies and folio. And Mike was showing us a picture, beautiful one of that, that. That's Iceland. If only you had more tabs open, your computer would run. No <laughs> longer. Is that where you want to go back to again? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I want to go back to every single place. On every this single. Page. Place. But what about a place you've never been to that you're dying to go to? To shoot? all of them again. Um, ooh, man. Peru. Uh, what? I just throwing random places at you. Oh. Um, uh, oh man. I mean, everywhere. I don't. You been to I... Australia? No, not Australia. That's no, on no. my New list. New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand comes to trade on in New Zealand. Wait, you went all the way to New Zealand? You go to and Queensland. Did, and didn't make it to Australia? No, I did not go to New Zealand. Oh, you didn't go there either. I would love to go, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I was I would say India and Thailand, but I'm hitting that. Go uh, and then, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's Patagonia. There's a lot of, like, really remote. Uh, I really want to go to North Korea, to be honest with you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, not obviously. I don't believe in their craziness, but uh, yeah. What do you but guys think? So do you do you think uh, like photojournalism as far as be political? It'd be amazing for photojournalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've, I've seen a couple of pictures that came from North Korea, like you know, giant piles of red chilies, um, like piled on the streets. Um, they use those to make a lot of the food that they eat, and it's just an amazing, just huge pile of chilies, and you get just desolation everywhere else. Very unique place, I think, to take pictures. Yeah, there's a guy who I actually found. He's a SmugMug user, and he's active on our um, our forums. And he works for a uh, <clears throat> organization out of the Netherlands. He's from the Netherlands. Yeah, he goes to North Korea a couple times a year for humanitarian missions. And 
his photos are just incredible. I mean, they're, I mean, just raw photo document, you know, photo journalism, documentary. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, it's just like, it's such a, it's so crazy because we know so little about that place. And, and that's what's really the draw for it. It's like, what is going on over there? Like the Middle East, I would think it would be crazy to go to the Middle East and just go to all those countries and try to shoot in all those countries, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, you can see on my homepage, I have a number of shots from Jordan, which is smack in the Middle East, but it's very, I mean, Jordan is probably one of my favorite countries I've ever been to. It's it's incredible. It's, I can't wait to go back. We have a workshop there uh, next spring that I'm leading with Kate Habercroft for the Giving Lens. And, uh, and you've yeah, been to Israel, too? No, my original plan for the Jordan trip was to fly into Israel and take a bus over the border into Jordan, but that was right when the war broke out last November when it got really crazy and they, they had that you know two-week war. Uh, so it wasn't a good idea. So I, I canceled it last minute. Right. I would think to take out your, to have that camera out in certain countries would be really scary as far as people seeing you take pictures of stuff, right? No, I mean, have that I, issue? When, I, when I go out, I mean, I'm usually, I mean, the biggest I have is the 70 to 200, so it's not ridiculously big. Cool. Lots of tales and Lotus. You you said Australia. And what? Where I'd like else? I'd to go to Australia. I also really would like to visit Alaska. Oh yeah. Yes. Alaska. Oh, oh look at we'll sure. <laughs> the man. He's gonna come in just in time to tell us where he wants to travel. We were gonna wrap up, and you showed up. What's up I just got back from Alaska, Lotus. I'll have to share the. Um... Is Rodriguez. What you, man? I shoot people with my cannon. What? Did you have a kid, a child issue? Is he doesn't want to talk to us. Okay. He's muted. You're muted, buddy. It was the lightning home. Sorry, it was the lightning home opener tonight. And I, I, I didn't know that. You I sent you a message actually. We, I didn't, didn't get it. it. Oh. Yeah. My sent bad. How did they win? Seven two over the Panthers. Fuck Seven yeah. goals. Yeah. That is not smoking. a baseball. Stamp goes with the hat trick. It was a beautiful thing. Yeah, it was a good game. Good way to start the. Do you, do you ever? I asked Bonacore about shooting Niners game. Did you ever shoot pictures at the? Are you allowed to at the hockey game? No, I've taken my camera a couple times in the past, but it's more of a pain in the ass if you can't get really right down on the ice. But yeah, they don't like you bringing in the big lenses unless you got passes, so that doesn't work either. <laughs> there's, a, there's your answer, Michael, for if you're going to take that lens to the football game. Yeah, yeah, actually, the Bucks will let hey. you take bigger lenses in, but they won't at the Lightning games for some reason. Here you go, Mark. What do you think? <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> Ooh. That's what he said. That'll uh, work. Ooh. That'll oh. work. So you want to go to Alaska, and all I can think about is Breaking Bad. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, I have a bunch of Alaska photos. I should sort through those and post a few. We just went on a cruise there um, last last fall. I'm jealous. Not yeah. of the cruise though, because I'm not really um. I don't really crave a cruise, but I do want to go to Alaska. Well, you get so many destinations. You know, you, you go to sleep, you wake yeah. up, you're somewhere good. Yeah. Now we're all together. We get picture together. <laughs> Wait, one more, one more. Wait, I'm taking a no, bunch. There. Taking a bunch? Oh. Uh, one more. There we go. I don't have it. Hold my mouth. Oh, wait. Okay, I didn't know we were doing that. Okay. Uh -oh. Wait, oh wait, everyone's, hold on, I gotta get everyone's different size is, uh, everyone's like watching, it's like, what? So while you're holding your phones and your pose, Mark, where do you wanna, where would you love to travel to? Uh, Mine's a lot harder to hold, bro. Prague. I'm Michael, you, Prague. Where, where, you said you missed your workout, I'm helping you out here, buddy. Mark, you'll love Prague, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's that's, amazing. that's one place I've always You want wanted. to go to Prague? Okay. Frog. And this so, is oh, and, my so, thermos, by the way. It's not and before we wrap, uh, wrap up, Mark, we talk about themes. We talk about locations. You can go back and watch it. We, there's, there's, there's uh, Lotus's servant or husband or whatever she calls him. Man's the, <laughs> the rock star. <laughs> what does it say on his shirt? The, 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 what is it? Never and say hi. What does it say on his shirt? Hey, dude. The one with the most guitars wins. That's true. That is correct. I agree. Yeah. Thank you, honey. She bought me that shirt. John. Did she? Well, if you want to grab your guitar and play us out. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while you were gone, he was like, and your husband is going to come play a song. And I was like, oh, he's gone. Sorry. Maybe it's cold outside is what she said. 
Uh, so and Mark, so movie mat, movie mesh Tuesday. Have you, have you meshed? You meshed me up. Have you meshed other? You meshed Lotus stuff, right? Or no? Meshed Lotus. I haven't. Michael and Scott, I haven't yet. They're on. They're on the. I'm waiting, team. man. They're on the hit list. I want another mashing. They're on the. Not till he does me, Lotus. He wants to be done first. Is it? Whoa! <laughs> picture. Lotus. Oh really? I put her in Sin City. She's got a grin in this one. Uh, that's first one was the grimace. Yeah. Mmm, mm, scowl. Yeah. So, and so Florida, Florida photo walk life. Before we like, that's where you are. Did you go on photo walks in Florida and shoot the, the fine beaches and oceans and selfies? Uh -huh. You do as many selfies almost as me and Lotus or Lotus, Lotus. Uh, Mark is one of the amazing and wonderful moderators of the self portraiture community. Yeah. Trying to trying to make it a great thing. It's a, it's a tough job, trust me. <laughs> did you did you partake in many of a beverage at the Tampa Bay Hammond? Is that uh, correct many, to say? Actually. Okay. Way, way overpriced, but I still had a few. <laughs> I can't couldn't tell at all. So I'm just saying. No, this is Mark's baseline. Don't 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 joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Mark is a, a rock star too. Former, former rock star. Former, still well, never a former, but always uh, a rock musical star. sense, I guess. Though. No, you're, but you're a rock star with music too. You did, you did all that stuff. You did the cow stuff, and they and, uh, <laughs> did the cow. So, so okay, I, I keep promising to wrap up. Lotus, like, can you wrap up? I want to spend time with my family and my rock star husband, who wants to rock star. Um, what is so you all know each other's work a little bit? What are do you? Is there anything that stands out from each other's work that you want to like style or surprises or anything? That what do you, you mean? Wanna... I know everybody's work who's in this hangout very well, Me too. but I don't understand your question. <laughs> uh, what What do you admire about their work specifically? Is there anything specific that you want to that stands out or that you think of with them or that um, gives you a Michael Boner hmm. Boner? It gives me a Michael Boner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think everybody, all of you guys have a style of their own, and they all have really high-quality content, and they consistently post and try new things. I think I really admire that. Thumbs up, I agree, Mike, Mark. I can totally, totally agree with that. I, I, I love, Scott, I love your processing. I, 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 every time I try and just, like, go through it and just... just it's amazing every time. He so. loves your essence, bitch. I love it. You <laughs> guys. He I loves, loves your essence, bitch. Thing. He loves it. Yeah, I, I just it's just flawless. I mean, it's just awesome. So. Uh, I I really enjoy your your movie posture. I mean that and your selfies are, you, you, like that that whole spawn thing was just. Yeah, that was a, that was a labor of love. <laughs> yeah, and he showed us the process of him doing that. It's crazy. Yeah, and I like I love the behind the scenes of that too. You know, uh, that was a, just a great thing. But yeah, your movie posters are, are stellar. Actually, just really thank incredible. You. Thank you, thank you. Put the Bonacar on the spot. You're like, I love Twins Tuesday. Pretty much. Pretty much. That sums it up. Whoa! Wait, wait a picture. <laughs> <laughs> that was a classic. Right. Well, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys had fun. I, I that's what it is. I mean, it's just fun to just hang out and chill and come yeah. up with some questions. But I, you know, the hangout format is one people are still playing with. And the whole, you know, uh, very oh, this is this person and they do this and they do that and to go through, you know, I don't know. I just I, I try to think about like if people were listening to it instead of watching it, you know, and not have yeah. dead air, just constantly have chatter. And a lot of pop, my favorite podcasts always do that. I like the comedy podcast, uh, you know. So, thanks for joining me. I, we're doing New York City Herald three at the end of the month. If you want to fly out, Michael Bonacore, and give us mug to mug T-shirts, we're doing a photo walk. <laughs> Sally, I don't know if you know Sally Morales. She's gonna lead this photo walk. Wait, 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 uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, It's literally the uh, first Saturday in November, November second. Uh, well, I'm uh, smug in mug and myself. Is that right? Smug Bug and myself are leading a photo walk there October twenty fourth. In New York? New York, New York City, baby. I'll All be right, back. Then I'll have to be there. I'll be making the announcement in a couple days. Oh well you just kinda did. <laughs> but nobody's watching. What? Eight eighteen? <laughs> October twenty fourth, you heard it here first, the week before ours. We're gonna go to that you one. guys ever make it to Milwaukee for one of these things? Holler. I mean, you know. We would love to. In nowhere. fact, one of my dreams is to do a hurl around the world and be able to like have the Winnebago or something 
where we can all just pile in and drop people off and do yeah, drink and so photography. And wasn't wasn't there a group of people? Um, uh, let's say Moritz and and some other po folks did that like over in Europe. They went from did country they? to country. Uh, did they? Yeah. We, I did and then we'd that. stay at different people's houses, so whoever was along the hurl would just stay at the Well, I'm talking about we get like a hello, like Holiday Inn or some of the sponsors so we can crash somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's the Holiday Inn tour of... Rappaport and, doesn't, does not brave well, it. Well, wave when you fly over, anyway. <laughs> we need an airline sponsor, we need a hotel sponsor, we need someone to drive the bus, we need internet on the bus, we need... Photography spot. Smug Mug is going to do that. I mean, we need stuff. Oh, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> get, just get Hasselblad or Phase 1 to sponsor us. We need Vic and yeah, Dotra yeah. to smile. Just send us pictures of him smiling. Yeah. <laughs> he's got Man. the best smile. He does, he? right? <laughs> and he's got to wear a purple sweater to match his smile. Shut up. My favorite thing was when he when he introduced uh, What's Hot. And, he, <laughs> and he's like, we have a new feature called What's Hot. It was kind of Anyway, I love watching a, Vic talk. I do too. So Vic, if you're watching, this is not us making fun of you. This is us admiring you. Uh, thanks to everyone else for watching. Uh, any last words before we uh, hit the end button? That was awesome. It was fun, man. Just just like always. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Very, very late. Thank you. Late. Mark, I owe you an email. I owe you an email, Mark. It's coming tonight. Okay, Kiss. cool. Thanks, Kiss. guys. All right. Bye. <laughs> Good night. Later.